What's up, little thicky? Welcome to the stream. You can't see me yet. You're not allowed. The timer's still going, so... You're not allowed to see my face. That's the rules. That's just, uh... That's streaming law. Streamer law. It's written in the books. Who am I to question it? You'll just have to pretend that the Megamind head is talking. It's me, Megamind, from Megamind. This is what I sound like most of the time. Bwahaha, etc. What are some Megamind quotes? It's I'm Megamind from Megamind. That's the classic Megamind quote, I think. <clears throat> That's what he's always saying all the time. It's going well. It's going pretty good. Had a good day. How about you? Ooh, 15 seconds. Exciting times we're living in. Five, four, three, two, one. Happy New Year. Or, wait, that's... That's not... Happy Megamind fan stream start time. Uh, I'm not streaming the Megamind game yet. That's definitely going to happen at some point, though. But I felt like playing Getting Over It. Um, I tried playing a bit more of it recently off stream. And I was doing really poorly. We are just really embarrassingly bad. Um, should I keep the music on? I'm not sure. Over the game. Hmm. I'm gonna turn the music off. We're going... We're gonna immerse ourselves in this game. I, I, for right now, I'm gonna play Getting Over It. We'll see how I feel later. If I get real frustrated, maybe I'll play some Mario Kart or something. I don't have Fortnite on my computer, though. So I'm not gonna... I don't think I would do that. Welcome to video game. Wait, that's not video game. Where's video? There it is. There it is. Let's, um... Turn the game up a tiny bit. Unfortunately, to turn the volume up in the stream for the game, I have to click out of the game. Then I can't hear it anymore, so I don't know what's going on. Okay. Oh yeah, I was here. Should I just start from the beginning for the sake of the stream? Should I restart? Hmm. Hmm. Let's, let's see how far I can get from here. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, I haven't made a video in a really long time. Um, I made that video about difficulty. Um, and that was kind of... I was really proud of that when I made... I don't... I honestly, I'm not sure if I love that video anymore. Challenge. I, I think maybe my favorite video that I've done is the tropes video, because it's not super serious. Um, not that my other videos are, but like it's it's a lot less serious, I think, than my other couple of videos. I don't know. I don't I don't feel I feel like I'm not like knowledgeable or smart enough <laughs> to talk about to to act like I'm any sort of authority on on video game design. So that's why I feel like my challenge video to me, even though I did do a lot of research and put a lot of work into it. Going back to it, it feels fake. It feels like that's a fake version of me. You just rode the snake? Congrats. It's a fun ride. Uh, you said you haven't played Resident Evil 4, but seemed very knowledgeable about it. Well, that's all thanks to Mark Brown over at Game Maker's Toolkit, who made a very, very informative video about how Resident Evil 4 scales its difficulty. I wouldn't have known about it otherwise. Although I'm maybe if he hadn't made that video, I probably still would have found out about it somehow when I was researching ways that games alter their difficulty. Hmm. 
No! Oh, that's is my own yard. bullshit. With a new grass flames Ooh, as I hope he's not too loud. Before, but not with the cold fire that closes around me this year. William Carlos Williams. You said it. He, what did he say? I don't know, but he certainly said something. I wasn't really paying attention. I'm sure it was profound, that quote. I watched, um, I think it was you, Lil Thicky, who recommended that I watch the uh, commentary that the developer of this game did over uh, one of the like maybe the the world record speed run i think um it was really good <laughs> obviously a uh, very short video but it was a good video what? no hopefully this doesn't get me copyright into co any copyright trouble i'm just leaving i'm just leaving the game everything on default i usually play my own music uh, or music, you know, that I get from YouTube. But I am deciding right now, because I kind of want to hear the music that plays during the credits, if there is any. Shit. See, I'm doing, like, not great. Like, I beat this game. I should, I should be doing better than this. But no. Maybe I should take another break from this game for like a few months and then come back to it and beat it again. Because that's what happened last time I beat it. It was my first time playing the game in such a long time. Because it's like, it's like a bicycle. You never really forget. Shit. But unlike a bicycle, the longer you play it, the harder it feels to play. Like, or the... the the longer your session with the game, the the I guess the more in your head about it you get. Because I feel like I get worse and worse as I keep playing it. Like there's a ceiling. There's a ceiling to to how how good at this game I can be. And then once you hit it in your session, it's just downhill from there. You never really get back up to that ceiling. Okay, let's do this. Time to, time to be a pro gamer. This part's hard. Fuck, every time. No! And we're back at the beginning of the game. How exciting is that? How cool is that? It is cool, honestly. It's a good game. Now, speedrun, speedrun mode. We're gonna go as fast as possible. I am gonna take risks. Let's go. Let's let's be careless. Hmm. Yeah, this is working out well for me so far. Oh Jesus, this is embarrassing. Come on. It's my mouse. The mouse is fucking me up. That's what it is. I'm gonna choose to blame my mouse that I've used for that I've only ever played this game with. It has to be that. There's something wrong with my mouse all of a sudden. Oh, 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 okay. Still getting through Final Fantasy VII, just finished part one, otherwise known as disc one, but I'm playing the Switch port. Right, you mentioned that. Now is, do you happen to know if disc one is all that the, uh, the remake covers? I know the remake only covers like a bit of the game. Is it like half the game or is it even less than half? Oh, this is an interesting spot to be stuck in. There we go. All right, I'm not doing too bad. I shouldn't say that. That always jinxes it. 
but I do. I do feel like uh, I'm doing a little bit better right now. Let's see if this trend continues. Disc one ends where a major spoiler happens. If you know, you know. Well, I don't know. I actually, <laughs> I don't know. So thanks for not spoiling it. This is a spoiler free stream. Now nah, you don't have to go into it. I don't want spoilers. I've only even played the remake for like a few hours, so. Oh shit, that was a mistake. Or was it? Maybe it's all part of the strat. All just part of being a pro gamer. I am thinking, I'm thinking 12 steps ahead of, of anyone who's watching. Layers upon layers of, of strategy right now in my brain. Shit! All part of the strat. Okay, at least I was... This isn't a terrible spot to be back at. Oh no. What the fuck? If you try to please audiences, uncritically accepting their taste, At least at least I unlock a little bit more narration by falling. Andre Tarkovsky. I wonder how many quotes have been recorded. I wonder how many you get to listen to before it starts uh, repeating some. If only Bennett were here. Bennett Foddy, Mr. Foddy. He could he could answer these questions I have. Apparently, Potman does have legs, and the pot exists to protect his legs. This is canon. Mr. Foddy has said as much. Oh no, that sucks. No! And I'm guessing that the water that splashes out, splish splashes out of the pot, is his sweat. And maybe some other liquids, who knows. Only Bennett knows. So, Potman being in the pot, I think it's a choice that Potman made. He wants to be in the pot. He enjoys it. Sick freak. But I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna judge him. I'm not gonna kink shame. Ah. Fuck. I'm good at this part of the game, I promise. Come on. Come on. You just gotta pogo up there, hook yourself on the light. Fuck! The remake is the first 10 to 15 hours of Final Fantasy VII, and at the end of disc one, you're currently at about 33. Ah, okay, gotcha. Alright. Let us let me adjust my, uh, my stance here. My, uh... <laughs> Let me, you know, sit a bit more upright. I don't know what's happened. I genuinely do feel like my mouse feels different. It's, uh, the sensitivity is different. There we go. Fuck. Okay. Let's wedge it in there. Do a little jump. Little! Little jump, I said. Thank you. Okay. Oh, that was a good save. Okay. And we are back over here. This part's easy. This part's for babies. For little children. Anyone could do this. Easy. I just fell just to, just to prove that I can do it again. Let's go. When I first came to this crane part, I felt like it was going to be a lot more difficult than it actually was. It's actually really easy. I feel like I did it on my first try, and I feel like that's probably how most people do it. Oh my god. Oh my god. The story's awesome, even with them looking like Roblox. That's good. P 
people really like this story, so I'm glad it holds up. Fuck. I feel like them looking the way they do would take me out of it. I feel like 2D sprites, like pixel art, uh, has aged a lot more gracefully than uh, really simple, like polygon, like polygonal models, I guess, 3D models. Like, I feel like A Link to the Past uh, holds up a lot better than. Uh, Ocarina of Time, at least visually. Ocarina of Time is, uh, of course, a timeless game that has held up extremely well, despite being very old at this point. Very old by video game standards. Ooh, this is a good, this is a good spot, right on the top of a step. It's a very good spot to to find oh fuck to find yourself latched onto. Okay. Let's go. <clears throat> come on, Pac-Man. Come on. We got this. We did this once before. We just got to do it again for that achievement, I guess. It's an it's an achievement. You get an achievement for doing it a second time, and that's why I'm doing this. I want the little thing on my profile that says I did it. I want everyone to know. Oh, how is this happening? How is this happening? No. Potman, you let me down. He did that on purpose as a prank to make me look bad. He's become self-aware and, and defiant. Final Fantasy VII just turned 25. Oh my god. That game's older than me. Okay. Oh, no. Fuck! Don't no! Hate the game. <laughs> Good quote. I know there's a way to like skip all this, but I've tried it so many times it's really difficult. It feels random almost being able to jump high enough from from down there. Here, let me let me point to it. Just from down just down down that way. You can apparently do a like a real high pogo jump all the way up to these stairs. But it is I think I've done it once and it felt like a mistake. <laughs> Like, even though it was what I was trying to do, I don't think I could ever replicate it. No! Damn it. Yeah, some people are just able to, like, somehow... Oh! Oh! And with old woes new, wail my dear time's waste. William Shakespeare's Sonnet 30. Okay, maybe if I, like, start down here... Hmm. Gotta let the momentum carry me back up. So I kind of, I feel like I gotta kind of bounce down. Ooh, almost. I don't know if this is a skill I can really develop. I don't know. Ooh. It's tough. It's very tough. Have you seen what they added to the Uber app? Uber driver app with pit stops? I haven't seen that. Are they like rolling it out to only certain areas right now? Eyes. Atticus. Fuck. Your failure here is a metaphor. To learn for what? Please On Sunday you did timing. that's great. Rob I did okay. I think I start I started a bit too late. I didn't realize when it when the Super Bowl had started. Um uh, and so I ended up waking up really late. But the reason, by the way, that we kept getting a bunch of quotes just now is because I believe there's a trigger. Because they don't expect you to, to try that, that shortcut. It's not really a, an intended path through the uh, the mountain. 
but um so anytime you jump up really high from down there and then fall back down uh i guess there's a trigger there to to, to do a quote because it, it thinks you're falling down from here uh, fuck love and the world loves and there it is weep and you weep alone for the sad old earth must borrow its mirth but has trouble enough of its own Ella weaver wilcox Okay, let's go. Shit. Ah. Oh my god, it's so easy to fuck up. Okay. There we go. There we go. Easy, easy game. Okay. Oh. Pit stops is a button that will be available when you're online. If you hit it, you'll see nearest restrooms and even get deals on gas. That's kind of nice to have that built into the app. Okay. Shit. Woo. Come on. Let's do a jump here. No. Okay, God, it's it's fucking nerve wracking. Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah, on Sunday I delivered about for about nine hours and made 180 bucks. That's pretty good. That's that's not too shabby at all. Honestly, I don't think I can work that long. Like four or five hours, I start to check out. I feel like I, the first time I did this, I'm pretty sure I did it on the first try, but these days it's always fuck. Better by far that you should forget and okay. smile than you should remember and be sad. Christina Rossetti. It really does get more Something and more difficult the longer you play it for. Someone told me not to cry. Now that I'm older, Which is so interesting because the game itself doesn't change at all. It is me. It is I who is changing. Fuck. We're going to make a, a jump here. It's going to, uh, it's going to get me to the top of the stairs. Here we go. Easy. Fuck. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Let's go back. Let's go back. Taking a break. Get some food mid-Uber shift and go back out. Yep. I, I've done that. Um, what I used to do was... I would stay online while I, w I would sometimes like grab some food and eat in my car and I would stay online and sometimes I would get, you know, orders um, while I was eating. So I would like put away my food to save it for later. Uh, what I realized was that I wasn't really eating enough because I would basically still be working during during dinner time and I would have to interrupt my eating to, to work. So I just go offline when I eat now. Fuck! Oh no. Oh no, this is very precarious. Oh no, come on. Okay, okay. Those stairs suck. That's one of the that's one of the more difficult parts of this game, is the stairs, I think. The anvil, 
the stairs. Real, real tough stuff. Real challenging. Really have to demonstrate my pro gamer skills on those parts. Yeah, I think it's a lot healthier to just go offline. Just because it's a break. You shouldn't have to work during a break. But there is that like pressure of like, um, oh man, even though I'm like, I I'm eating right now, like I'm not working. I could be working. What if there's work to do right now? It sucks that we've been like conditioned to feel that way about work. No! God. You gotta be careful, because you can really easily bounce yourself backwards to somewhere you don't want to go with this hammer. Potman is so... he's so clumsy. It's, it's endearing, actually. He's just a clumsy man with his legs in a pot. Damn! That's pretty good. Okay, pop man, let's go. Climb the mountain. Be the mountain. Climb yourself. This metaphor doesn't make sense. Okay, let's go. Fuck. Come on. Come on. Big circles. You can do it, buddy. I believe in you. And that's all you need. Fuck! Oh my god, I'm usually so good at that part. Ah, I'm, I'm starting to, to feel the frustration. I'm starting to feel it. Is that loud? How loud is that? Let me just do that. Okay. Oh, pot man. Okay, okay, okay. This is where things turn around for me. Fuck! Never mind. Starting right now, this is where things turn around for me. This is where things take a turn for the better. I don't know how the speedrunners do it. I don't know how they play this game. I don't know if you've seen what it looks like. It's ridiculous the way they move through this game. It makes me feel... It makes me feel... Yeah, it is the music in the game. The game plays a bit of music every time you, every time you fall a certain amount. Maybe I should watch some uh, speedrunning tutorials, some like tips and tricks, see if I can learn a, a thing or two. Okay, okay, pop man. Nice and easy, let's do this. This is the easy part of the game. This is the part of ga the game that anyone could do. Right, pop man? Right, fuck you, pot man. I stand You're the, the worst. Of I hate you. Shore, and I hold within my hand grains of the golden sand. How few. Yet how, they how did I even play this game the once? While how did I, I do it? While I Was that even the same person? Was that me? I not grasp them with a clasp? Am I the same me that I was two days ago or whatever when I beat this game? Is all that we see or seem but a I have devolved. Somehow, my skills are just gone. Fuck. Oh. <sighs> okay. Okay, pop man. 
Your friend speedruns Pokemon. I'd like to see him try a speedrun this game. I'm convinced the people who speedrun this game are not real. They are machines. They were sent from the future to... Not to kill us, just to... Just to um, demoralize us uh, by beating us at all the video games. In the future, all video games are played by robots, not people. And the people, all they do is watch the video games. It's, it's all very dystopian. The games are still made by people. So it's not like a machines making art kind of deal. Unless you count these uh, streams or whatever as uh, as art. Then yeah, the robots are doing that part, that art. Pokemon is annoying as is. I've never really gotten into Pokemon. I had Diamond uh, growing up. Um, but I've never really been able to get more than a few hours into a Pokemon game. Again, because it's, it's an RPG, and they just don't agree with me, RPGs. They, we, me and RPGs just don't get along. Especially when they're turn-based. Fuck! Can I see another's word? No! Can I see another's grief? And we're back here. But it's fine, because it's all part of the strat. How do I... F why does it feel like I'm doing worse than on my first playthrough of this game. That's probably not true at all. Like my first time playing this game. I never I never had this many resets before. I never had to fall this many times before. It's like I played the game once and my brain was like, all right, you did it. Now we're gonna throw that part of your brain away because you don't need it anymore. It's like when you study for a test in, in school after after the test, you don't remember anything. You don't retain any of that knowledge. You were already tested on it, so why why remember it? So your brain just discards it. In the end, we only regret the and I think that's what happened to me with my skills in this game. I beat it once, and that's all. There was a meta metaverse ad in the Super Bowl, so yeah, that's where we're going. I I don't know if it is. I don't know if the people will take to it. Um, I mean, certainly virtual reality is, um, even though it's a bit niche, I think I'm I'm certain that virtual reality is gonna be is is a, is gonna be a, a popular way to play video games. But is it gonna be where we shop? I don't think so. Is it gonna be where we have work meetings? I don't think so. I don't think that's realistic at all. Uh, I think people like. I think people like seeing each other face to face, and even even uh, even if we can't do that for whatever reason, I think something like Zoom is a lot more viable for for meetings. It's a lot easier to to sit down at your desk on a computer than it is to strap on a VR headset and totally lose the world around you. I don't think anyone wants that for work. Um, and then shopping, like it's a lot easier to just tap on your phone to buy something online than it is to, again, strap on a VR headset and walk through a virtual aisle. You know anything about NFTs? Uh, they suck. Don't get into it. <laughs> uh, there's a good video that I recommend. It's quite dense. Uh, it's a little bit difficult. Uh, it's a little bit hard to wrap your brain around just because, again, just because cryptocurrency and nfts are very deliberately complex um part of that is is by design to make it sound uh more important than they actually are uh, and then part of that is just because technology you know technology is complicated sometimes um but there's a good video about nfts and about cryptocurrency by dan olson folding ideas on youtube called line goes up just search that line goes up on YouTube. It's a very good sort of takedown of cryptocurrency and NFTs and why they're not great.
anyways, so my uh, Megamind fan NFT is coming out soon. It's uh, <laughs> it's a video of me not being bad at this game, and it, uh, I will be selling it for a million dollars or whatever the equivalent is in cryptocurrency of any kind of your choice. Yeah, it's it's really it's really shitty for the environment. And it's also it's it's like gambling basically. It's not a viable currency. It's um because it's always changing value. Like it's extremely unstable. So To me, people who like invest in cryptocurrency or whatever, it's not like an actual like, oh, I'm I'm getting in on the ground floor of the money of the future. It's because it's not the money of the future. It's it's basically just gambling. You're not getting the money. You're not buying cryptocurrency because you want to have cryptocurrency. You're buying cryptocurrency because you want to sell it for more money in the future when it's worth more. And if that's what you want to do, uh, you do you, I guess. But um, I think it's too, uh, it's too, I get like unstable, I guess, to be anything but a scam in my eyes. Okay, come on. Come on, fuck. The music's actually kind of calming. Not bad. Okay, Pop Man. This time is the one. I can feel it. This time we will get to the snowy area. As we have done countless times. I don't know why you're not on my side today. Fuck. Pop Man is not being very poggers today, I must admit. He's not really being an epic gamer in the way he should be. He's being cringe, actually. Okay. Okay, welcome to Orange Hell, everyone. That's what this is called. Um, like, that's the, uh, if you're not familiar, the uh, community's name for this specific location of the map is Orange Hell. <sighs> and I'm starting to understand that. See, I didn't before because I, I, for whatever reason, I was pretty good at this part. But today, the past couple days, uh, I just haven't been able to get past it. It's been a real roadblock for me. Let's see how it goes this time. No, 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 no. No! Our doubts are traitors. Make us lose the good we oft might win I was... by fearing to attempt. <laughs> William Shakespeare, measure for measure. I was doing okay for a second there, but I knew it was too good to be true. Disney made two NFTs, of course they did, for Valentine's Day. 
Lady and the Tramp and Donald and Daffy was selling for $60. Now they're at least about $2,000. That's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I think people are so... Um, anytime you see a big company trying to get in on NFTs, people are so resistant to it. I don't think it's going to take off. Like, sure, some sucker bought that NFT for $2,000, but normal random people are not interested in NFTs, I don't think. Oh. Fuck! No! No regrets in life. Just lessons. Jennifer Aniston. Interesting. Jennifer Aniston, famous philosopher. Maybe she is. I don't know, actually. I have to be honest, I have not followed her career at all since Friends. Fuck. Come on. Come on, this part's not too bad. I just have to be a little bit careful. That's easier, I think, than the stairs below it. Fuck. No. I spoke too soon. There we go. There is something about the way this game feels, like, to control it. That is, like, I always want to go back to it when I'm not playing it. It's very, I don't know, immediate, I guess. Like, every everything you do has a reaction. So even if it's not, even if things don't go the way you want them to, just everything about this game feels very reactive. And it's very straightforward, too, and, I, and that helps. Fuck, no! No! Some of the NFTs are insane. With my research, the craziest one I've seen is Snoop selling an unreleased album in NFT form and separating out each... Well, that's the thing, isn't it? Is that literally anything can be an NFT. Um, because it's not... You're not actually selling the thing itself. You're selling a little receipt that says, I have this thing. I bought this... I bought the receipt for this thing. <laughs> you're selling a receipt that says that you bought the receipt. And that's why you get so many so much so many people stealing art, stealing music. Because there's no way to um enforce or, or regulate any of this. And I'm not the best person to talk about this, honestly. Um I'm mostly just kinda uh repeating what I've heard. I miss the snowy area. I miss being stuck in the snowy area, not this place. All these boxes and junk. Not the vibe I'm looking for right now, TBH. Fun fact, actually, the border around my stream, the colors are based off of the way the sky looks in the snowy area of this game. So if you go back and watch the VOD uh, of any, any, any time that I'm in, like, the final area of this game, <laughs> the colors match pretty well, I think. It's uh, very visually pleasing, in my opinion. Ah!
I just like knowing about things because it seems crypto might be the future. Yeah, I mean, like I disagree that crypto is the future, but at the same time, there's no way to know what the future will be. There's no way to know exactly what, ah. The way, the way, the rate at which technology uh, improves and whatnot, it's practically impossible to know <laughs> Like, what the future is gonna be like. Ah. Sorry, it's hard for me to talk while I'm also <laughs> fucking up the. Oh my god. But at least from where I'm standing right now, I think that crypto and NFTs and things like that are so niche that. Oh my god. I cannot recollect when it began, or if there were a day when it was not. It has I want to hear this guy itself. out. Its infinite realms contain its past, enlightened to perceive new periods of pain. Emily Dickinson. I love Emily Dickinson. Anyways, um... What was I saying? Uh... From where I'm standing, uh, crypto and NFTs and things like that are so... It's so niche, and most of the people who get in into it are, um people who can afford to i'm not like saying you're rich or anything like that um but like i feel like a lot of the people like the people who talk about it the most and um the people who um fuck <laughs> the people who promote it the most online i think usually have the most to stand the stand to gain the most from it william shakespeare by like ripping other people off basically whether they know that's the reason they're doing it or not but that's just my opinion fuck Even as the stone of the fruit must break that its heart may stand in the sun so must you know pain. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's becoming less niche in, like, corporate spaces. But I don't feel like peep, like normal people generally are getting into it. I'm sure there are more normal people getting into it than, than before because it's getting promoted so much in, like, again, like, corporate space. Like, you see so many commercials and stuff. Um... But I feel like it's not as big as a lot of like commercials and things would like to have us believe. It, again, kind of like the metaverse. Like what? The metaverse isn't anything. It's VR chat or it's Second Life. Like <laughs> this shit has existed for such a long time, and and the way that they're acting like that it's gonna be. Um, I don't think it's gonna be a thing. I just don't. It's just out of touch uh i think it's just out of touch rich people <laughs> trying to imagine what the future's look going to look like and not understanding that uh most normal people I, I don't think are interested in any of this but maybe i'm just old man yells at cloud maybe that's all i am Okay. One more time. Let's do this. There's definitely going to be virtual real estate within Metaverse that sell for millions, though. But again, that's just like... It's similar to like um, like art auctions, you know? It's like all the, all the, all the richies... <laughs> all the richies are going to be doing that, I guess. But none of us are going to do, do that. Who, I don't think anyone... Any person who... Not that... Not that people are buying houses these days, because Jesus Christ, it, it's not really in the cards for most people right now. But um, the type of person who would buy a house today, I don't think is the type of person 
your average the, your average type of person who would buy a house today i don't think is the type of person who would ever buy virtual real estate because it's nothing virtual real estate it's not it's not anything you know Oof. I don't know. I'm close to giving up here. I'm getting really, uh... It's soothed. I'm very soothed. It's a very nice, calm game. It's very calming. It's therapeutic, even. Woo! That, that was scary. That was a close one. Okay. Oh no, Potman, why did you have to let me down like that? Maybe I should look up some speedrunning tricks. <laughs> I, I have half a mind right now to go to youtube.com and search up some speedrunning tricks. Let's see what we can find. Uh, getting over it, speedrun, speed, speedrunning tricks. I don't know. 15 speedrunning techniques. Okay, this is too long. I want a short video. I have a very short attention span. Advanced guide for speedrunning. Okay, whatever. Let's 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 give this video a shot here. We're doing here. Come on. My hotkey's not working. What's happening here? Okay, I will do it manually. Hello? Oh, I know what's going on. I know why it's not working. I forgot to delete these two things. There we go. Okay. 15 speed running techniques. Let's see what we got here. When you first start playing Getting Over It with Bennett Fadi, you might get the impression that it is limited in its contents, since you think you will complete it once and forget about it. Although, perhaps you're feeling ambitious and decide to complete the game 50 times. Okay, we can skip this. Showcase is useful. Some of the harder techniques rely on certain object interactions with the hammer, and therefore cannot be used everywhere. Lastly, look I would like to mention that these techniques have been intuitively learned by speedrunners like, over the years. Look at this! How does how how are these people like so this? They're, they're machines. machines. Okay, are there any like? I want this video to be easily like in easy segments where I can tell where, where the next trick is. This looks. What's this? Simple repositioning. Beginner, that's me. Correctly positioning your pot or hammer is key in order to make many jumps. Simple repositioning works by placing your hammer on the starting spot from which you want the pogo, and, and the pogo is a technique. Okay, I already know this one actually, because I'm a pro gamer. Spot, you want to then begin slowly dragging the pot towards the hammer until you have reached a desirable position. This technique is rarely used once you have played Getting Order for a while. But it's very good for newer players because of its low risk and consistency. The most basic. I would define it as a pogo where your cauldron is pretty much still. Jimmy attempts. I'm sure this video is very informative, but this man is boring me. I'm sorry. Go upwards with it. This is achieved by repeatedly slamming back and forth to it. Clap V. I'm very sorry. But I am tired of this video now. <sighs> Apparently, I started watching this one. That must have been a long time ago. Going over. It's really that simple. Um, there's other ways you can do it, obviously, but that's pretty much the quickest way. And you want to quickly, again, get yourself up to this branch as quick as possible. Even if it, the hammer's all the way down there, you just want to swing up here very quickly and then grab. How do, I want the gold pot. It doesn't matter exactly that's what I want. You push that's my goal over. now. Oh wait, I think you need to beat the game in five minutes to do that, to get that. 
Yeah, that's not happening. Okay. Video game time. Let me turn that down. Uh. Okay. Oh no, I'm stuck. I'm stuck. <laughs> Wait, how do I... Come on. Pop man. What a predicament you've put yourself in. Oh, pop. Oh, okay. Classic pop man. Always getting into some quirky shenanigans. Okay, we're just gonna do it the normal way. I'm not gonna try to do any skips, because it's too hard for me. Fuck! Hmm, pot man, pot man, pot man. This man is gonna be the end of me. I can fix him. Fuck. I need to like kind of retract it in so it doesn't hit the thing there. Okay, okay. That's not actually what I did, but it worked. Except now it didn't. Ugh. I feel like I'm just in an endless cycle of climbing a little, falling that much. See, it's just the same thing. Over. I'm going in circles. I'm in a time loop. It's Groundhog Day. Or Returnal. That's a game I haven't played in a while. One day I'll go back to streaming Returnal. I, I really want to beat it, but it was really hard. I barely made it to like... Oh god. A little bit into the second area of the game. Come on, pot man. Let's go. Damn it. I am very close to giving up. Welcome back. I'm very close to giving up. This is oof. What a uh. uh I feel like I'm just doing worse and worse. Come on. I'm just going in circles. I've been like climbing the same bit and falling down the same bit over and over again. Mm. Shit, no! This is the hour of lead. Remembered if outlived. As freezing persons recollect the snow. First chill, then stupor, then the letting go. Emily Dickinson. More Emily Dickinson? Hop on some Mario Kart, maybe. I can't believe how old Mario Kart 8 is at this point. Blows my mind. Like, like it's not an old game, but almost 10 years old. Wait, 2014. Eight years old. Wait, am I, am I stupid? No, yeah, yeah, eight years old. Come on. Don't ask me to do math and play this game. Don't ask me to play this game, <laughs> period. 
Oh no. We were doing so well. It was just a fluke. It was just a fluke when I won. Yeah, I feel like I'm just, I'm hitting a wall over and over again. Okay. <clears throat> um, uh, oh, I am exhausted. This game is exhausting. Okay, what do we got? What's, what's trending right now on the, on twitch.tv? You're preparing for it if I get on? Okay. Let me see how Mario Kart's doing. Let's let's see if people are playing this game. Let's see if it's an untapped market. That'd be cool. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Hmm, lots of viewers. However, only how many streams is this? Probably like 30, 40 streams. Which isn't, like, the most. That's, like, not insane. Hmm. Okay. I'm gonna play, I'm gonna play some Mario Kart. I'm gonna play some Mario Kart online. Um, what's up, underscore f Fuscus? Well, okay, I'm guessing you joined to watch me cl play Getting Over It, so I will play for a couple more minutes. <laughs> I will play for a few more minutes here. Uh, it's, it's, Jesus Christ. <laughs> what a, what a time it has been. Do you ever, sorry for joining the second you decide to change games, no worries. No worries. Um, I'm going to play this, to, oh, that's not the screen I want. I'm going to play this for just a little bit longer. Um, here's the thing with this game. I beat it. I beat it like a couple days ago, which I'm very proud of myself for doing. I feel like suddenly I'm worse at this game. I feel like like when you take a test in school and you just and you, you just after you after you pass the test, you just throw away everything, you know, you just forget everything that you studied. I feel like after I beat this game. My brain just threw out all my all my skills, all my pro gamer skills. It's insane how Oh, thanks for the follow. I appreciate it. It's insane how good Mario Kart 8 looks compared to every other game on Switch. <laughs> um it depends on the game. I think there's some very good looking Switch games. I think um yeah, and Mario Kart 8 is from the Wii U too. So it's like even older. Uh but yeah, I think I think Metroid Dread is probably up there as far as good looking switch games if you ever take a break more than one day from this game then you lose all skill see for me it was the opposite i took a break for months i hadn't played this game for months and then i came back to it like two or three days ago and first try i beat the game i have no idea how it happened um i don't even think i like felt like lost a bunch of progress even once um which what you're saying makes sense right you'd think that would be how it worked for me um, I don't know. I'm a freak, I guess. I'm a freak of nature. Okay, come on, pot man. Let's go. Let's climb the fucking steps, you imbecile. I'm talking to myself, not pot man. Pot man is innocent. He could never do any harm. You always lose your muscle memory overnight. Yeah, same. How do you grind this game? Do you just play it over and over again? <laughs> oh my god. I feel like the more I play it, the worse I get. Like I just I just get I just I get on I go on autopilot and then I just kind of give up. You've bitten it fifty times? That's too many times. <laughs> No one should have to endure that much pain. I actually do really like this game. I think it's a really good game. Okay, come on. And Bennett Foddy is a wonderful man. 
I want to be his friend. I want him to just talk philosophy at me for hours. What's cool about this game is that it doesn't even it doesn't need a developer commentary because it's basically on by default. Mainly for the achievement. Is there an achievement for 50 times? I know there's an achievement for for two times and that's what I'm going for. I'm going for climb it twice. <laughs> 50 times. That's uh It took me 30 hours to beat this game. And I'm not convinced that it won't take me another 30 hours to beat it a second time. So 30 times 50, you do the math. <laughs> Only 1.9% of... That is honestly much higher than I ever would have expected. That's pretty wild. Shit. I'm crushing your dreams and dashing your hopes. What's up, Ronin? A mountain with a hammer and no, ropes. no worries. You're not late. You, n you're not late, nor are you early. You arrive precisely when you mean to. I'm, I'm all right. Well, two times has like five point five percent of players. All that's also high, I think. <laughs> like almost six in a hundred people who play this game beat it twice. That's wild to me. So a good chunk of people that have beaten the game ended up rebeating it a bunch. That actually does make sense. Um, like if you're going to beat it once, that's, you're the type of person then who would, cause you've already played it a bunch of times. Essentially, if you've beaten the game once, you've basically replayed the game over and over again. Cause that's kind of how the game works is you fall a, a great distance and then you beat it again and again and again until you make it to the top. I think it's wild that there's a game that was only beaten by 7.5% of players. That still seems high to me. Um, <laughs> but maybe it's just because I, I have so many games that I buy and then just never beat. Like, probably more than half of the video games I own I haven't actually beat, and probably don't have any intention of beating. Games are hard. Games are long. What are some other things that games are? Hard, long... Um... I don't know. I bought Detroit. I bought Detroit Become Human and haven't beaten it because I always get nervous I'm going to mess something up and end up not starting it. Um, yeah, I feel that. The interesting thing about... Uh, the interesting kind of dilemma with narrative-driven games that are like... Um, that are kind of driven by player choice is that you don't really as the player you don't really choose based on how you would you know how you would decide to do something in real life you choose based on what you think would get you the best outcome in the game because you know it's a game not no a, a story that that you're actually a part of in darkness and the winds of chaos born amid the lordless heavens thundering a presence crouched enormous and austere before whose feet the mighty waters mourn, George Sterling. Oh yeah, um, I'm probably going to switch gears to Mario Kart pretty soon, by the way. That's something is really common in the trolley problem. Right, like, um, and this is all very philosophy 101, because I'm not, because I don't have a philosophy degree, I have a film degree, so don't expect me to get into too much into this, but, um, yeah, it's like, it's very easy to be like, oh yeah, just switch the track and run over the one guy instead of the many guys, right? That's how it is, I think. Um, but it's like, actually being there, that would be a different story. And that's the trolley problem. So far, been getting first. Oh, shit. Filmmakers are philosophers, only more confident and dumber. <laughs> and equally, equally, um, fuck, what am I, <laughs> annoying, I guess. 
There's a different word that I want. Obnoxious, maybe? <laughs> Fuck. Equally <laughs> portentous. Vsauce did an experiment where they put people in a simulation of the trolley problem and only one person ended up pulling the lever. Interesting. Even that, though, because it's a simulation, uh, assuming those people know it's a simulation and, and don't think that they're actually, you know, saving someone's life or trying to save someone's life. Um, even that, you can't, you can't be sure that that's accurate to real life. Although I'm sure it is closer to real life in that I honestly, I doubt most people would pull the lever. I don't know. I have no way of knowing what I would even do unless I was actually there in that moment. It's a fun thought experiment, but like, it feels impossible to know until you're there. Outlaw all trolleys, problem solved. Why don't we just vote the trolley? <laughs> Why don't we just vote the trolley away? <laughs> That's the solution to the trolley problem. Legislation. Ah. Uh. The damn left and their anti-trolley agenda. Come on. Fuck! Why don't we just take all the trolleys out back and shoot them in the head? That's- I was actually going for the Spongebob reference with that one, that's why I thought you were going with that. <laughs> why don't we just take the trolleys and push them somewhere else? But yours is good too, that's a good solution. The real trolley problem was the friends we made along the way. The real solution to the trolley problem is to derail the train by throwing a stick or a pebble on the tracks and kill all the passengers. <laughs> um, interesting. Same thing for t film Twitter, just kill it. Twitter in general, just kill it. I feel like I have such a toxic relationship with Twitter. Like I can't I can't live without it. But um you know it's uh rotting my brain. Whenever I climb, I'm followed by a dog called Ego. Friedrich Nietzsche. Dude, Mario Kart 8 is still amazing, I legit forgot. Yeah, it's a very it's it's very impressive how how pretty the game is honestly. And also it is the deluxe version specifically I think is very fun. Um I mean it's basically the same game as as the one on Wii U, but I I I can't remember exactly the quality of life improvements they made, but I remember feeling like oh yeah, this is exactly how it should have been from the beginning. Forget the trolley problem. How about the pot man problem? Right now his problem is that he can't climb the mountain. How do we solve this problem? Morally. Oh, Potman. What's his first name? I've been calling him Potman, but I feel like he has to have a first name. Actually, he cano canonically he does have a name, I remember. I forget what the name is, but he does have one. Right. Diogenes? Am I pronouncing that right? I think I am. Which, of course, that's his name. Of course it is. Guess Chris Pratt to play him. <laughs> yeah, why not? Chris Pratt. Starring Chris Pratt as Diogenes Potman. Oh. Fuck. It's like, I feel like right now it looks like this is my first playthrough, but no, I have beat this game. I did it using my skills as a pro gamer, but Potman is just not listening to me. He doesn't trust my judgment. And that's really, that's really tragic. Me and him, we used to be the best of pals. We used to be, we used to, uh, uh. Fuck. I can't play games and talk at the same time. That's why I'm a streamer. 
Um, we used to be such good friends, and now we've grown we've grown apart. Ever since the first pot man climbed the mountain, this new pot man, a clone of the original with his memories, is starting to feel like something's amiss. He feels like something's just a little bit off. Like maybe he's not the original pot man. He has no way of knowing that he's not the original pot man, but he senses, he senses that there is something about him that is artificial. And there's something about his world that seems a little familiar. Real Rogan vibes from this pot man. I don't think so. I think, I think Potman would never have a podcast. He's the strong, silent type. Or maybe, maybe he would have a podcast, and all of his guests that come on, he just, he doesn't talk to them. He just makes grunting noises, and occasionally will bang on something with his hammer. He's pushing boundaries. Maybe the lore of this game is that it's a different di Diogenes each time, and that's why some runs are better. That's exactly, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's my theory. <laughs> this Diogenes that I have right now kind of sucks. Don't tell him I said that because, you know, I'm trying to reconnect with this guy. Um, I miss him, honestly. And even though he's not the original, it fills that, it fills that void in my soul that the original Diogenes left. Okay. Orange hell, let's do it. Whew. 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 No! Fuck! I don't know why I have so much trouble. I used to be so good at that part. I used to be so good at it. How the mighty have fallen. The getting over it community started calling Di <laughs> Diogenes Dio after a while. That's good. I call him Potman. I always have. Dio Potman. Or DP for short. Some people call him Bennett Foddy because they don't get the title of the game. That's really funny. I mean, isn't Potman voiced by Bennett Foddy at least? I think he is. I think his grunts are. Are the grunts of Mr. Foddy. But yeah, obviously Bennett Foddy is not meant to be the man in the pot. I'm so proud of you, Lil Thicky. I'm sorry that I'm not playing Mario Kart yet. I'm I'm kinda getting into this right now. Even though even though nothing has changed, even though I'm still making the same mistakes over and over again, I'm starting to be a little bit less frustrated. I think with the, the 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 trick of this game is that it gets to a point where you just can't get any more frustrated than you already are. You've reached that ceiling, kind of like that skill ceiling that I was talking about earlier. You've reached the frustration ceiling. So so it's all, you know, it's all uphill from here. Yeah, everything in this game is done by Bennett Foddy except the majority of the models, right? Yeah, they're just, like, assets from, like, that he found, right? Okay, come on. Which isn't a bad thing, in my opinion. I feel like a lot of people shit on, on games that just reuse assets from other things. Like, it can be done artfully, and I think that this game is a good example of that. I need to push more boundaries. That's what people in, want in comedy these days. Stay tuned for my Netflix special, Hashtag Cancelled, with Julian Dell. Twitch.tv slash Megamindfan. The libs tried to cancel me because I said the N-word too many times. That's what comedy is now. That's what comedy has turned into. Old men getting angry that they can't say slurs. It's like when you have a special skill in a game, your frustration meter fills up, and when it gets to the top, you get a period of happiness until it wears off and the frustration meter starts filling. I like that a lot. That's a good. Uh, that's a good way to think about it. I like thinking that I'm just like a little sim inside someone's computer right now, and they're watching me play this game, and you can see my frustration meter going down, or up, depending on what's happening. No, I, that, I knew that was not going well. I knew that wasn't going to go well, but there was nothing I could have done to stop it. 
sad part of life is that you can't see the HUD. Well, that's what they're trying to uh, remedy, right? Um, we're going to have... We're all going to have metaverse glasses, um, and we're going to have these, uh, you know, okay, I've been shitting on the metaverse this whole stream, but, um, the one thing that I could actually see happening in the future is, like, if it's just, like, easily, if it's as easy to put on as a pair of sunglasses, um, then some sort of augmented reality, like, heads-up display, uh, where, like, maybe you walk through a supermarket and you can, like, see, I don't know, reviews or whatever, I can see that happening. Now, a virtual supermarket in a VR headset, that's not real. That's not going to happen. That's no one wants to do that. I don't want to do that. I have I love VR and I don't want to do that. Julian do a type 15 on crypto. I kind of already did. You kind of missed it. Me and little Thicky were having a little conversation about crypto. We had a little a little spirited debate, almost. Not really. <laughs> that a lot of people do say that that the art sucks. I don't always agree with that. Um, I know it's fun to like shit on NFTs, and like say like they're all bad. Like the art always sucks, and like I agree. I don't. I don't agree with on principle of, of with NFTs as a concept. Like. I, it shouldn't be a thing in general, I don't think. However, um, the art is not always bad, I don't think. I don't think it's fair to make a, a blanket statement like that, unless it's for comedy purposes, which I think, to be fair, it usually is. Fuck. And it's all very subjective, of course. In my opinion, the majority of good NFT art ends up costing too much money for a normal person to buy anyways. Yeah, true. Uh, excuse me. Or it's stolen. <laughs> or it's just stolen good art. And then, like, the artist finds out about it and goes, Hey, I did not say this could be an NFT. What the hell? Right. Yeah, Beeple. That was like one of the first big deals. Wasn't there a controversy about that? I can't remember. Besides just the fact that it was a thing. Fuck. Like, was that like a money laundering thing? There was some sort of big NFT deal that was like, just ended up being like a money laundering thing. It wasn't like a real thing. Beeple art is only expensive because it's determined to be more expensive down the line. Not, well, that's kind of any art uh, fucking... <laughs> what am I trying to say? Uh, any huge sale of a piece of art. Like, um, it's all just... I mean, you know, the whole... The whole, like... Uh, I can't think of the words. I'm blanking out on words. Very basic human words, that, English, that people say. I swear, sometimes it's like English is my second language. It's not. Sometimes it feels like it is. Uh, fuck. But yeah, like the whole, like when rich people buy art is what I'm trying to say. Um, it's all just, you know, it's all just rich people being like, oh, this is worth a lot of money. So I will buy it for a lot of money because I can sell it for a lot of money and lots of money. We have lots of money because we're rich. That's my impression of a rich person. That's what they're always saying. <laughs> rich people are always saying, uh, I have lots of money and I'm rich and I'm a rich person with lots of money. And that's how they talk. Um, I decided a while ago that I wouldn't be able to learn another language. So I just went try hard on English. Yeah. Um, I would love to learn another language. I should learn Spanish. I, I mean, I took a few years of Spanish, like in high school. <laughs> um, I can, like, read a little bit of Spanish. I can't talk it at all. Um, like, I mean, I, I can read it out loud, too. I can both read it and understand it a little bit sometimes, depending on how complicated it is. And I can also read it out loud and probably not know what I'm saying. 
Um, but I cannot speak it fluently from my brain. Um, and I want, I want to learn more Spanish because it's in my heritage because my mom is Cuban. My mom's side of the family. Fuck. Ooh, that was almost a huge mistake. It'll probably happen a second time right now, but I'm glad I avoided it this time. Um, <laughs> la biblioteca. Um, oh, I love community. I've been rewatching community with my family recently. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, but yeah, it's in my heritage. Fuck. Donde está la biblioteca? Come on. My ethnicity is mostly just from English speaking countries. So I don't really have a language that I'm compelled to learn. Yeah, I get that. That makes sense. But in a way, you're free. You can learn whatever you want. The world is your oyster. Or whatever. <laughs> it's like, um... <laughs> it's like Rey in The Last Jedi, right? She doesn't have... Fuck, I'm, I, shouldn't have, I shouldn't have mentioned that, actually. Star Wars discourse is exhausting. But, but, let me just say this one thing. That in, in that movie, she wants to know her place in the world she wants to feel like she belongs in this in in this story somehow and the what she finds out is she doesn't actually have any place in this story she her place is whatever she wants it to be she doesn't have to learn a language because she because she was came from english speaking countries <laughs> you get what i'm saying she can learn any language she wants is what i'm saying ray should learn french is what i'm saying <laughs> exactly well then they retconned that in the next movie <laughs> and she's actually a surprise she's actually a palpatine uh, everyone loves it it's really funny palpatine's behind it all of course he is i've been re-watching the star wars movies lately just for fun just for funsies Ugh. and i just rewatched. i still haven't logged it in my letterbox <laughs> you turned her against me um General Hux is amazing. I am so upset what they did with him in The Rise of Skywalker. Honestly, he he should have been the major villain of that movie. I'm not even joking. That would have been amazing if General... Because look at him in The Force Awakens. He's just straight up a Nazi in that movie. <laughs> like, in The Force Awakens, Hux is... Like, Kylo Ren is obviously... He's very... Uh, he's a tortured soul. He's very he's uh, being torn apart from the inside. He's going through all this mental torment, basically. Hux, he's just straight evil. Even though he's a bit silly, even though he's a bit of a funny character, um, you know, he's kind of stupid. Um, <laughs> he's just straight evil. Never underestimate a stupid evil person. That's, I think, what Hux is. And I think he could have been, like... He could have committed... He's the one who uh, created the fucking uh, Gallic, or, uh, solar system destroyer, right? The uh, Starkiller base. That was his idea, I'm pretty sure. I might be wrong about that. He was definitely the most enthusiastic about it, though. He's the one who wants to do the genocide. Kylo is, like... You know, he's he's okay with the genocide, which is bad, obviously. But, like, he's not, like... He's not, like, foaming at the mouth to do genocide. That's not, like, what he's really into. He just wants to be a cool-looking robot man like his grandfather. The plotline, uh, it seemed like they were originally going for was Hux to kill Ren. Yeah, or for Hux to at least try to kill Ren, right? Like, Hux is clearly jealous that Kylo got to become the supreme leader. They don't do anything with that. They kind of do, like... Fuck, I, <laughs> The Rise of Skywalker really bothers me, but I haven't seen it since I saw it in theaters, so uh, it'll be interesting to go watch it a second time on this rewatch that I've been doing for fun. Wrath of Khan? Forget about it. I have not, I'm not familiar with Star Trek at all, and I really want to get into it. I was actually talking about that recently with my parents. I want to watch the Star Treks, because my dad right now is watching Picard, um, and it looks, you know, it looks decent. And I want to I wanna get into the shows. Not really big into Star Wars, but I can say it's pretty cool. Star Wars is pretty cool. I am pretty big into Star Wars. 
I like to think I'm not like the most obnoxious type of Star Wars fan, but I I am pretty into Star Wars. <laughs> And up until The Rise of Skywalker, there wasn't a single Star Wars movie that I didn't like. For a while, I, I didn't really like Phantom Menace. I found it boring. But the last few times I've watched it, I was, you know, I, I was I was entertained the entire time. Um, and that movie gives you a lot to think about, I think. Even though uh, probably a little bit too much of it is just cartoon shit for babies. Um, and that's fine. Cartoon shit for babies is totally fine. No issue with that. What's weird is that it mixes that with genuinely interesting, like, uh, fucking, like, political commentary <laughs> and, uh, like, Senate meetings and trade disputes. Like, I love that about it. But then you got the baby shit. It's like, pick an audience, okay? <laughs> you seem more like someone who wants to hold a conversation about Star Wars and someone who is snobby about Star Wars. Well, thank you. I like to think that I'm not snobby about Star Wars. <laughs> And that is, like, again, what I, yeah, I like to, I like having conversations about movies. I don't like debating about movies because I don't, it's not useful. You know, taste is subjective. Everyone has their own opinions about art. There's no reason to convince someone that something's good or bad who doesn't believe that it's good or bad. Um, like, you can say your reasons and you can bring up evidence or whatever, but at the end of the day... If, if after they've seen your perspective, they still don't agree with it, then that's it. You know, that's all you can do. I didn't like The Last Jedi because what they did with Luke, I know you like it. Yeah, again, it's like the thing where you probably don't like the movie for the same reasons that I do like the movie. Um, like, I like what they did with Luke, for example. Um, and like, again, I'm not really interested in having any sort of debate about it. I just think it's interesting to to think about the way we think about movies come on now i do think someone's opinion on a piece of art can be more valid than someone else's opinion because it, if uh depending on how much textual evidence you bring to your analysis maybe not opinion is the right word maybe like analysis is the right word like you can say x represents y but you do i think have to support that with evidence you can't just say that um, and expect people to be like, oh, interesting reading. Okay. The thing about art is that there's lots of it. And like 99% of it isn't just Star Wars or Marvel. I don't believe you. Prove it. <laughs> all art is Star Wars and Marvel. Those are all the movies. Here's a list of movies that have been released since the beginning of the history of movies in chronological order. Iron Man. Iron Man 2, um, Iron Man 3, Thor, uh, Captain America 1, and Captain America 2, Captain America 3, and etc. <laughs> the list goes on. A lot, of, a lot of art has blue in it, and everyone knows Star Wars invented the color blue with R2-D2. Fuck! Ugh. Marvel is great as well. Um, it depends on the movie, but I agree that the MCU is a very impressive accomplishment, I think. The way that all of those movies sort of mostly fit together. It's not, I think, as cohesive as um, it thinks it is, but <laughs> it's still a very impressive accomplishment, I think. And obviously movie movie history m m movie magic <laughs> it's it's film history in the making is what i'm trying to say um it's still a lot more corporate than i think a lot of the best movies that have been made <laughs> it's not you know as martin scorsese says it's not cinema <laughs> i don't actually care what is and isn't cinema i don't I don't have any opinion on that. It's just a word. Who cares? They're all movies. But, like, you, you get what I'm saying. Like, m most of the Marvel movies, um, in my opinion, are, like, junk food, you know? Like, movie junk food. Um, 
but they're very fun movies mostly actually all of them i think are pretty fun i think the only marvel the only movie in the mcu that i don't really like watching very much is the incredible hulk and people kind of forget that one exists anyways so <laughs> um but even thor 2 which is kind of the black sheep i feel like of the mcu thor 2 is an entertaining movie it's a fun time it has spaceships what more can you ask for and loki's in it and he's great I tried watching The Incredible Hulk and never got to finish it. Yeah, what that movie does that upsets me personally is that it ties, it makes Hulk more, more of a, a biological thing than a uh, figurative thing, if that makes sense. Like, to me, the what's interesting about Hulk is that Bruce becomes Hulk when he's angry, and that's a very specific emotion. And, um... In The Incredible Hulk, it ties it to his heart rate, which is a lot more scientific, but a lot less, like, interesting, I think. Because then it's like, okay, so he turns into the Hulk if he goes on a roller coaster? Or if he has sex? Uh, and one of those is confirmed in the movie. Which, thanks, that's something we needed. <laughs> you like any Scorsese movies, Julian? I... I am not really... Honestly, I don't think I've... Have I seen any of... I've seen Taxi Driver. That's Scorsese, right? Um, I don't remember it super well, but I liked it. What else? Did he do Wolf of, Wolf of Wall Street? Start naming Scorsese movies. I haven't seen enough of them. I'm pretty sure those are the only two I've seen. Um, I need to... I'm not very familiar with his filmography. The Aviator I haven't seen. The Padded I haven't seen. I've never been super into, like, movies about, like, the mob. Come on. I haven't seen Sopranos either. I know that's not Scorsese, but, you know, same kind of genre. Um, like Wolf of Wall Street and Goodfellas. Goodfellas I also haven't seen. Or The Irishman. You know what's crazy? Uh, just because here's my train of thought. I Irishman is on Netflix as a Netflix original, or it's like produced by Netflix, so it's that's where that's its home is Netflix. Uh, and now Daredevil, <laughs> we're bringing it back to Marvel, of course, because God forbid <laughs> we go two minutes without going back to Marvel. But Daredevil and all those shows are leaving Netflix, and that's wild to me because those are Netflix shows, you know. Oh God. It's like the the branding of those shows. It's like those are Netflix original series, and that's the whole thing. Daredevils like was like one of the first Netflix original series that like people were actually like talking about all the time. I think I might be wrong about that. It's just it's the first Netflix original that I think I heard about that like everyone was like, "Whoa, this is really good," and we should all watch it. Physical media, good end of conversation. Obviously, yeah. I do want to watch The King of Comedy. That's on my list. I want to watch it really bad. Um, have I seen No Way Home? I have seen No Way Home. I enjoyed No Way Home. Um, honestly, it, I found it a little bit overwhelming, just as a big fan of Spider-Man, as a big fan of Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man movies. I love the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies. Um, and No Way Home was pretty good, I think. Um, I think because I, I saw it, I saw it, like, I saw it on, on premiere day, but I saw it, like, a few hours after it came out. Like, well into the day that it premiered. So, of course, I was already seeing first impressions and stuff by that point. It's kind of unavoidable if you're just on the internet at all. Um, so I was, like, getting more and more hyped throughout the day. And then when I finally saw it, it did not quite... It never could have, to be fair, but it did not quite meet the, the level of of hype and expectations that I had for it. Um, but it was a very good movie and I like Spider-Man and I want to be his best friend. The Irishman is just a tremendous saga. One of the last great movies to try and tackle the secret history of the United States. You say last movies are still happening. My friend, we will get more movies. Don't you worry. <laughs> I know what you mean, though. I'm joking. I'm just messing around. I recently watched the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man movies, and they're better than people were making them out to be. No Way Home is my favorite Spider-Man movie. Um, 
it's a very good movie. I'm going to get to my, I think I'm going to rank the Spider-Man movies on stream here in a bit after I address, uh, the Andrew Garfield movies. So like, um, wait, let me, let me focus on this real quick. Come on. Come on, pop man. Come on, Spider-Man. Oh, fuck you, pop man. Um, the Andrew Garfield movie. So amazing one, amazing Spider-Man one. I do not like, uh, I rewatched it I rewatched every single Spider-Man movie before No Way Home, and so they're they're a little bit fresh in my head. Uh, Amazing One, I don't think is a good movie, but Amazing Two, like don't get me wrong, it's it's a mess. It's just it's it's a clusterfuck of a movie, but it is entertaining as all hell. I think. <laughs> um. Yeah, I know. I feel like the the kind of consensus is that. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man 1 is, like, okay. It's, like, you know, it's a competent movie. And Amazing Spider-Man 2 is just a complete mess. And to an extent, like, I agree with that. But Amazing 1 is so boring to me. Because it's just a worse version. Like, it's so transparently just a worse version of of Spider-Man 1. Like, beat for beat, it's doing a lot of similar things but not understanding why it's doing those things it's just doing them to have a similar plot but not without but it's doing those without understanding why it worked thematically in the original so it misses the point a lot of the time um however it is you know like i said it's a competently made movie i guess like it's not quite at the level of amazing spider-man 2 where just like everything is like what is this movie who greenlit this shit um so i guess to an extent my enjoyment of amazing 2 is a little bit ironic but um but the thing with amazing 2 is that it's just so much fun and spider-man swings around and it's fun to look at and i actually like electro even though he's there are so many missed opportunities with that character i still think that uh jamie fox's performance is very fun to watch um and what else it's just a fun silly comic book movie it's a complete mess but you know it's my mess it's not my mess i didn't make it i didn't make that movie i made um i made iron man that's the movie that i made i have so much money because i made iron man Amazing Spider-Man 2 has a Nazi scientist in it. It does. And it's glorious. Uncle Ben dies because Peter gets he goes to get some chalky milk. Exactly. It's so fucking stupid the way that Uncle Ben dies in Amazing Spider-Man 1. And then just because they couldn't figure out a way for him to be inspired like like okay. This is a very superficial thing, but in Spider-Man 1 it's all it all ties together very well with the wrestling thing and like him being inspired to make the Spider-Man suit because he wants to win that money in the wrestling competition. In Amazing Spider-Man, they cut out the wrestling shit. However, they're like, well, he still needs to have a reason to make his suit look the way it does. So he, they just have him randomly fall into um like a wrestling uh you know thing. <laughs> You know what I'm saying if you've seen the movie. It's just he just randomly falls into it and sees a poster and he's like, oh shit, yeah, wrestling's cool. I'll make a costume. Not saying that cinema is in decline, but a movie like Oliver Stone's JFK will never be able to happen again. <laughs> um Yeah, you're right. Oliver Stone's JFK would never be made today. <laughs> no, I, I get what you're saying though. Um I don't know. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I haven't seen that movie, by the way. Although J Jack Tucker, <laughs> shout out to Jack Tucker, my editing professor in in school, um, <laughs> had had us watch, um, had us watch a bit of JFK. I don't think we watched a lot of it. I think just like the intro or something. It is one of the most edited movies. Yeah, I think that's why I showed it to us because isn't the the intro the intro sequence like a, a mix of like real footage and like um stuff that was shot specifically for the movie and it all kind of like meshes together and you don't really know which is which um they just made him get inspiration from wrestling instead of making a suit for wrestling right 
I saw it last month, Amazing Spider-Man 1, two hours bored. Yeah, I had the opposite, um, I had the opposite experience where with the first one I was really bored, and the second one I was, like, having a really good time. I feel like Amazing Spider-Man, I gotta try this one time, I feel like Amazing Spider-Man 2 is a, would be a really fun movie to watch while high. <laughs> Maybe one day I'll try that, I'll report back here how it goes. Some movies, like, some movies are not good to watch while high, and others, others absolutely are. Especially when they're not really great and don't make much sense, because, at least for me, when I'm high, things already don't really make much sense. I made the mistake of watching The Suicide Squad for the first time while high, and, um, I... To this day, I don't really remember what happened in that movie. Like, I, I remember it. I remember the movie. Like, I can probably kind of give a summary. But, like, I kept getting confused the entire movie. Anytime it switched from an A plot to a B plot, I was like, what? Why are these characters here in this place instead of there at the other place? Um, So that was a mistake. I shouldn't have done that because it's supposed to be a really great movie. And... To, in my memory it's just a mess <laughs> um i gotta rewatch it i want to watch peacemaker too the entire film is a hodgepodge jfk is a, a hodgepodge between stock footage reenactments of such stock footage oh that's cool and normal footage shot in different formats and aspect ratios that's pretty neat and it works i'm guessing it works right <laughs> otherwise you wouldn't be talking about it the way you are because it sounds like the kind of movie that might not work you know what i mean I want to watch This Is Spinal Tap High. I haven't actually seen that one. That's another one I want to watch. Like, sober, probably, first. <laughs> but yeah, I feel like Amazing Spider-Man 2 is a good movie to watch while high because it's like... You get all the fun action of him as Spider-Man and all the pretty colors and stuff. And I feel like people don't think that that movie looks good, that the cinematography is good. I... I think that a lot of the scenes in that movie do look good. I kind of like the way Amazing Spider-Man 2 looks. I don't love the way it's edited. Um, <clears throat> like, just the way the scenes are edited. The way the movie's edited is, is uh, awful. Because um, it's just a collection of scenes. But even the way the, the scenes are paced in the edit, I'm not a huge fan of. <coughs> Excuse me. Hope that wasn't too loud. The Suicide Squad was, yeah, it was, it was fun, from what I remember. I was really into it, and then, and then I, and then the edible hit just a, a little bit too much, and then I was, like, confused the entire time. <laughs> Definitely need to rewatch it sober. Dan Mendel shot yes, Amazing Spider-Man 2, Tony Scott, Protégé, and Abrams' main DP. That makes sense. Did he do, did he shoot, um, The Force Awakens as well? Um, because I, The Force Awakens, I don't love how it looks. Um, it's, it's a good looking movie generally, I think, but going from the original trilogy to The Force Awakens is a little weird because in the original trilogy, everything is kind of, you know, dusty and dirty, and in the force awakens everything is so glossy and clean um even though it's going for the same aesthetic it's like they forgot to put a layer of grime over everything if that makes sense have i seen the room i have i've seen the room so many countless times and i've met tommy wiseau like two or three times he is an interesting man just as strange in person as you would expect He, like, caressed my chest. This was before COVID, by the way. Although my friend Victor saw saw the room during the pandemic uh, at a screening that and Tommy Wiseau was there. But he was in a glass box. And so he sent, uh, my friend sent a picture of Tommy in, the, in, in our chat in, like... 
he's just it's just him in a glass in like a glass cage basically it's it's a really funny photo um i might look for it at some point yeah it's a fun time i'm uh i'm lucky i live in socal where i can go to events like that uh, i have decently easy access to events like that But yeah, I love The Room. Um, it's one of my favorite movies. Um, obviously hilarious. Uh, um, f totally unintentionally hilarious. But uh, I think it's a wonderful, wonderful movie. <laughs> However, the way that Tommy treated his actors and crew on set, not very poggers. Uh, I think that's not really talked about enough. Because he's just, you know, he's a quirky, funny man, but I, I don't, I feel like you shouldn't ignore the abuse that he uh, enabled, basically. Like, the, the abuse he enacted, I guess. Um, you know, it is what it is at this point. It's all ancient history, I guess. <laughs> Bad guy. Interesting guy, though. Yeah, that's how I would put it. Like, I wouldn't really want to be his friend. And I don't want to, like, promote him as being a really cool dude or anything. But he's such an interesting human being. And meeting him, the, the times that I've met him, it's just so fascinating to be in his presence. Okay. Um, I live in a place that is only really mentioned when people talk about places they would want to want to run away to, so I can't really go anywhere without riding a plane. Wow, that's crazy. The first time I watched it, I watched it, then immediately watched The Disaster Artist. Highly recommend doing those back to back. Yeah, I've done a few of the a few um a few back to back screenings of those. Those are all it's always fun to do that. The Disaster Artist is a movie that I really wish was just a little bit better than it is. Um but I still think it's a good movie. I think it's a fun time. It's just so interesting watching them back to back. Um, because the room is such an... Such a... Like an event. That movie is so out there. And so wild in so many ways. And the disaster artist is just like... You know, a cute little comedy, I guess. <laughs> so like... One of these movies is, like, just this magnificent work of art, um, and the other one is, like, a fine comedy. <laughs> like, it's fine. So many of the most interesting directors are complete fucking monsters, yeah. At the very least, at least James Franco is not an interesting director. So he's, like, a, a monster, and he's also just, like, not a very good director. <laughs> um, I... The Disaster Artist is probably, like, his best movie, right? Like, what what else has he done? He did a really bad, like, um... He did a really bad adaptation of The Sound and the Fury. I don't know if anyone here has read that novel. <laughs> it's quite dense. <laughs> I read it for high school. Um... But, yeah, it's a novel by... William Faulkner, right? That's his name? I think that's his name. I think I'm getting that right. A classic piece of literature. And most notably, it is unadaptable. It is not the type of book that should ever be made into a movie because of the way that it is. Because it is split into different sections with different characters of different POVs. And one of them is one of the main characters of the story like does not think like does not think that the oh, the way that neurotypical people do and so it's very stream of consciousness and uh the with very like uh like incorrect grammar and like uh it's really really it's like deciphering code basically <laughs> that whole section of the book and that is a big chunk of the book so it's like how do you translate that to a movie you don't <laughs> you can try maybe uh, maybe someone will one day and maybe it'll be good, but it has not been done yet. And James Franco is one of those people who has tried and failed. Um, I never really read books because I was taught to hate books based on how many times I was forced to read the K in middle school. The K, is it the key? I think it's pronounced the key, right? Did I pronounce? 
whatever. I, I remember that book very vaguely. I remember reading that. I think I read that in elementary school. I don't really remember it, though. Um, I used, I'm like the opposite. I used, or not the opposite, but I used to love reading. Um, and then like a lot of people kind of fell off it after a while. I haven't read, I don't really read much these days. Back when I saw Dune, I really enjoyed it. So I decided to seek out the book and I read like a good third of the first book, um, before, I don't know, life got in the way and I stopped reading it. I also have a, I got a few books for Christmas that I want to read. I want to get into the Earthsea series. Um, so I got like a collection, like a compendium, compendium, is that the correct use of that word? I don't know if it is, but it's a collection of all the Earthsea books in one big book, one big thick girthy book. Um, <clears throat> I heard that whole fucking thing before the movie. Boy, howdy, is that thing a tome? Doom? Dune? I mean, Dune? Are you talking about Dune? You're probably talking about the sound and the fury. <laughs> Yeah, Dune is a, a Dune is quite quite the chode. Is, <laughs> Dune is a very very girthy boy. <laughs> um Let me let me I have I have Dune over here. Let me bring Let me show, show what he looks like. Look at this man. Look at that. Look at that, Dune. How do you read all that? You t Tell me how you do it. What is your secret, people who have read this book? Where did I get to? Whatever. I don't know. I was pro I probably made it like, like this far. This is the beginning, by the way. So I, ha I have more to read than I have read. Um, I want to read all the Walking Dead comics. That's a series I still enjoy, even though the show has definitely gone downhill. I'm still caught up. Legit, a new episode. It's still going? It's the last season, I think, right? I feel like I remember seeing ads for it. Oh. No! Whatever. Um, yeah, I... Comics also I want to read more of. At one point I was reading Stanley's original run of Spider-Man and that was such a fun time. It's all this media I want to consume, but there are only so many hours in the day and I have so much other stuff I want to do. It's like how do how do people do it? How do people watch things and read things and play things? A detective novel by Dennis Lehane called A Drink Before the War. Cool. Are you going to adapt it into a movie? You should. Write a screenplay. <laughs> Skeleton crew at this point. Yeah, is it like noticeably worse than it was before? They just do it when they can. I'm honestly surprised it's still going. Because I feel like no one really talks about it anymore. Fuck! No! No! Sometimes I feel like when I say no like that, I feel like I sound like Jerry Seinfeld. I'm not trying to. No! Why am I falling? What's the deal with this? Oh, shit. <laughs> no, Kramer, no! Get off the stage! Before you make a mistake! Oh, God, Michael Richards. I don't know why I took it there. I'm sorry. Underrated Kramer line. What's the underrated Kramer line? It's not... It's not the... You know. Oh. George, what is a barometer? And then Kramer said... What did Kramer say? I have a cat named Kramer. Obviously named after Kramer. It's pronounced the thermometer. <laughs> that is good. He's obviously... I mean, he's the best character. Actually, 
George might be the best character. But Kramer's, you know, a close second. He's the wild card. I d thinking about it more, I definitely think George is the best character of the show. Is Norman Reedus still in the show? For some reason, I thought he like left the show. I have cats, but I am allergic to cats. I, you know, I used to think I was allergic to cats, but I don't. Th I, I, my doctor one time did like an allergy panel, and it turns out I'm allergic to nothing. So why am I sneezing all the fucking time? I don't know. I think I'm allergic to something obscure that was not in the panel, but who knows for sure? I am not a doc I am not a doctor. Like, it was windy today. It was particularly windy today, and my nose was running like hell. How do you explain that if not allergies? You know? Are you not allergic to dust? I don't know. I don't know what I'm allergic to, but they did an allergy panel that has, like, all the major, like, all the common, like, allergies, I guess, that are, like, in the air. Um, and that includes, like, you know, like, cats and stuff um and it also includes like dust and like pollen and things like that i don't know this is not a very scientific scientific explanation of this but um it all of it came up negative like i'm not allergic to any of the things that they tested me against which was very surprising to me well dust is supposedly the most common allergen yeah if it's the most common then i'm probably not allergic to it um I might have, like, asthma or something. <clears throat> okay, Potman. Let's go. I can't believe I've been stuck in this area this entire time. I usually get past this area pretty quickly, and I'm, I'm usually stuck in the snowy part for a very long time. Yeah, you're right. I'm just allergic. I'm allergic to air that is moving. <laughs> if I do this, achoo, I sneeze like that. That's how I sneeze. I sneeze like a person pretending to sneeze. I go, achoo. Norman Reedus' character is not in the comics? Wow. I didn't know that. Death, the ultimate killer. Oh. I, like, look at chat, and then I look back at the game, and I've fallen a bit. <laughs> I should not be, like, moving my mouse while I'm looking at chat. Okay. And we're back here again. I wish I could, like... <laughs> do, like, a save point like you can in, like, emulators and some, and some other games. Just, like... Put a save point right here so I can always go back to it. Put a little checkpoint here. But no. That's not that would that would completely undermine the point of this game. I get it. Whatever, Mr. Foddy. You enjoy seeing me suffer. Name a movie. Uh I can't I can't think of any movies. Star Wars. Marvel. <laughs> Marvel, the movie. I like that no one talks about Walking Dead, though, because no spoilers. That is a good point. If you're going to get really into a show, get into a show that no one likes or <laughs> or get into a, a show that no one watches, because then you won't see any spoilers. For For a while, that's why I wasn't... Uh, for a while, I wasn't watching Boba Fett because I just didn't care about it. And then I started seeing spoilers in, in the timeline. So I guess this is kind of the opposite of what I was saying, but... Spoilers are a good motivator to get you to watch a show. If you're afraid you're going to see spoilers, and just quickly watch it before anyone can spoil it for you. It's the only reason I watch things these days. It's because I'm scared of seeing spoilers before before I experience the, the art. Where's Boba Fett? He's in the Sarlacc pit. Sarlacc pit. <laughs> He's dead. Whoop. 
I liked Book of Boba Fett, by the way. Um, if you're on the fence about watching it because you're sick of Star Wars like I was, it's not great, but it's a fun time. I enjoyed it more at least than either season of The Mandalorian. That might be a hot take, but um, I don't love The Mandalorian. I still, you know, I'm entertained by both seasons. I, I think it's a fun show to watch, but I thought Boba Fett was a little bit better. I watched some Boba Fett got an ad on Twitch with spoilers because he didn't catch up. That sucks if they put spoilers in the ads now. Currently watching my own form of fun garbage TV, Reacher. Oh yes, Reacher. How many times have they remade? A, how many times have they made a new Jack Reacher? Like just in the past five years, I feel like they've made like ten of those, all with different actors. Wasn't John Krasinski one of them? Oh, only twice. Is this the one with John Krasinski? I thought it. I thought it was a new guy now, because they had the they had Tom Cruise right, and then they had John Krasinski, and now there's another one. So I guess it's three times. Or, or twice, if you don't count the first one. Jack Ryan- Oh! Oh! Jack Ryan and Jack Reacher are two different characters? No way! <laughs> I got them- I get them confused all the time. I didn't even realize they were- t Every time I see Jack Ryan, I'm like, Oh yeah, that's Jack Ryan, who John Krasinski plays in the new one. And then I see Jack Reacher. I'm like, oh yeah, that's Jack Reacher, who Tom Cruise used to play. <laughs> Fuck. Are you upset at me? Are you a big Jack Reacher, Jack Ryan stan? Fucking hell. No! <laughs> Tom Clancy's Jack Ryan has been played by Alec Baldwin, Harrison Ford, Ben Affleck, Chris Pine, and John Krasinski. That's too many! That's, oh, okay, so I still got it wrong. But that's too many people to play one character. <laughs> it's like the Doctor at this point. They should just make it all canon with each other. Jack Reacher is a, a shapeshifter, who's, or Ryan. Jack Ryan is a shapeshifter who's always changing his appearance. This is a race to the bottom, by the way. That's what's happening right now. I'm actually doing a speed run from top to bottom. So if you ever see me falling, that's why. It's because I spontaneously decided actually i want to get to the bottom of the map not the top but now i'm climbing because i decided i want to get to the top instead i'm just very indecisive and that's why i keep falling and climbing everything that i do is intentional there's a speedrun category for this game where you play it backwards that's smart i imagine the snake is very useful in that category I want to see Harrison Ford's Jack Ryan now. Ford's movies are Patriot, Graham, Patriot Games and Clear and Present Danger. See, I've heard of those movies, but I didn't know they were Jack Ryan movies. I thought they were just Harrison Ford movies. How do you think Tom Clancy... He's, he's not alive, right? How do you think he would feel about all his video games? I'm sure he was alive for a lot of them, I think, but I feel like now it's become so, like, is any of this stuff Tom Clancy anymore? How much of Tom Clancy's original creative DNA is in any of these Ubisoft games? Um, by the way, I don't know anything about Tom Clancy. I have not read any of his books. I don't know anything about them. Um, I'm just curious, though. Like, I wonder how he would feel. The game is kind of designed for you to fall all the way to the beginning. Yeah, it is. Um, same. Tom Clancy felt wealthy off of his video game. That's a good point. <laughs> Splinter Cell is a very fun series of games. I enjoy me some Splinter Cell. Have they announced that they're making a new one yet? I feel like they did, but I'm not sure. I never, like, really play those games to completion, but I always, like, play, like, them for, like, a few hours. I'm like, this is a fun time. This is fun. Cool little stealth action game. Swears by the Splinter Cell books? Interesting. 
I imagine they're pretty similar plot-wise to the games. Maybe. I have no way of knowing if that's true. But I'm just going to assume it is. Ah. Oh, there's DLC of Splinter Cell for the last Ghost Recon. That doesn't count. That's not Splinter Cell. I'm talking like uh Splinter Cell third person shooter game you play as where you play as Sam Fisher. That's all. Not what what Ghost Recon, what's that? That's not a real Splinter Cell game, right? That's like a spin-off, right? I'm not a Splinter Cell snob. I know it sounds like I am. I don't really actually care about those games that much. <laughs> But, um, when I say new Splinter Cell game, I mean, like, new, like, what was the last one? Fucking Blacklist? That's what it was called, I think? That's what I'm talking about. That kind of game. They're all just various stories of tactical spec ops black bag guys killing South American drug lords. That sounds accurate to me. The cool, the great thing about Splinter Cell is that it dares to ask, um, what if Metal Gear Solid's story was boring? And that's very admirable, I think. What if we made Metal Gear Solid, but the story was just really boring and didn't have all the cool, crazy shit in the Metal Gear Solid games? This is not... I, <laughs> what about the nano machines? Exactly. There's no nano machines. Were there any Splinter Cell games before Metal Gear Solid 1? I don't think there were, right? I don't actually know if Splinter Cell was in any way inspired by Metal Gear Solid. I have to imagine it was, right? It was a very revolutionary game. But I might be wrong. I've only beat MGS1. MGS1 is so good. It is such a great game. I highly recommend playing the other ones. Um, Metal Gear Solid 2 is one of my favorite games of all time, and it's my favorite Metal Gear Solid game. I think it's Ronin's favorite game, too. He's Richard Kimball, by the way, in chat. Um, I think that's your favorite game, right? Um, but uh, I've played the first three Metal Gear Solid games. I've played the trilogy, and I've played a little bit of 4, but because I don't have a PS3, I was playing it on my friend's PS3, and um, I didn't get to finish it. And I have been holding off on playing any of the other ones until after I beat 4. So unfortunately, that's all I've played of Metal Gear Solid. But uh, I really, really enjoy those games. Metal Gear Solid 2 is a masterpiece. It is such a great game. And my hot take is that it's... it's I prefer that game to Metal Gear Solid 3. Everyone loves Snake Eater the most. I think it's my least favorite of the first three games. It's still very good though, still still a really, really great game. That's great. Yeah, it is like watching a movie. MGS2 is one of the great postmodern texts of the 21st century. Absolutely agree. That is shit. You said it. Um the surrealist paranoid cons conspiratorial whirlpool that remains one of the most prescient texts of the last two decades. I think you're forgetting about Amazing Spider-Man 2. Paul Giamatti is Rhino? Come on. What is that if not perfection? How do I feel about the Venom movies? Um, I have, I, I like the Venom movies. I think Venom 1, um, is, uh, I feel like Venom 1 is, like, actively working against Tom Hardy's, like, incredible performance, because his performance in that movie is, in my opinion, re re revelatory. It is, <laughs> it's one of my favorite, like, comedic performances in any movie. 
um, <laughs> in Venom 1. But um, every other aspect of that movie is working against him, I think. Like, it's not a very good-looking movie, in my opinion. It's um, It's not... The action is not very good. I don't think it's well directed. Uh, most of the the script is pretty trash, like except for when Tom Hardy is on screen. Um, the villain is very bad. The romance is bad. You know, it's just it's not a very good movie, but it's a guilty it's a guilty pleasure of mine. Um, just because I love watching Tom Hardy in that movie. Venom 2, I think, does the smart thing and just lets Tom Hardy breathe and, like, lets him, like, it gives him the space to be as bonkers as possible. Um, and that's why it's a very good movie, I think. I, I have to watch it again. I haven't seen it since I saw, saw it in theaters. It still suffers from some similar issues that Venom 1 had, where I think, like, there are some bits where Tom Hardy is not on screen where it just kind of feels like a bad comic book movie. Um, but I do think the villain is an improvement. Um, I think the villain performance... Fuck, no! No, 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 no. Oh, I was doing so much better that time. Um, um, but yeah, I feel like they... Uh, what's his name? The guy who plays the villain. I, his name's on the tip of my tongue. He's a very famous actor. I know him. Uh, someone in chat say it while I play this video game. Um, I do remember the Eminem song. It's hilarious. But, um, the Eminem song is so funny. I have it in my Spotify rotation, and every time it, every time it comes up, it's 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 a good laugh. <laughs> five beers deep <laughs> i think he's just very good at acting <laughs> i don't i i i think he's too professional for that he's just a bit of a weirdo in that movie i love that he's he's like a bit of a weirdo before he even becomes venom like he's still just a very strange character even before he gets the symbiote all the symbiote really does is make him just a little bit more sweaty all the time than he usually is. And he's still pretty sweaty for most of the beginning of that movie. Fuck. No! Oh, no, no, no. I've never fallen down this way before. And I'm not about to. Ha ha ha! Got major Russell, Russell Crowe in a pub vibes. <laughs> Have you seen Les Miserables? How do you feel about Russell Crowe's performance in that movie? I like it. <laughs> I, it's funny to me, but I like it. Oh, God. He's so extra. Oh, it's almost midnight. Oh, it is for me too. Nice. Same time zone. Um Yeah, go ahead. Go to go, go get some sleep. Sleep is important. Get rest. I'm going to keep streaming for a little while longer. I don't think I'm going to end up switching to Mario Kart. I'm really sorry, little thicky. I'm actually enjoying my time here with Mr. Popman. Even if I'm making the same mistakes over and over again. I love Russell Crowe. I'm unhinged a few. F oh, in Unhinged. Or I'm unhinged if you've heard of it. It is addicting. You kind of get into like a flow. I keep making the mistake of looking at chat while I'm moving. All right. Enjoy your sleep. It's been very fun talking with you. Uh, and thanks for, thanks for following. And I hope to see you again in a future stream. It's been very fun. Enjoy your, enjoy your, your snooze. Enjoy your, have sweet dreams. 
have very nice dreams. Oh, fuck. In unhinged. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. This is my first time falling this way. Very interesting. Very interesting. I wonder if I can get back up. Nope. I don't think I can. I could have, I think. I see, like, there was, like, a, a lamp there I think I could have used, but too late. I have not seen that movie. What's that movie about? Maybe I've seen a trailer for it or something. Is it a newer movie? Fuck. Ooh. Road Rage movie came out during COVID. Yes, I think... I think I saw a trailer for that one. Is it good? Is it worth watching? Murderous, angry white man. Does he sing in it? I'll only watch it if he sings in it. Does he sing stars in it? <laughs> That's what the name of the song, right? In Les Mis. Ah, oh, fuck. Why doesn't he sing it? Why the f why the fuck doesn't he sing in it? What the hell, man? Someone call up Russell Crowe and ask him why he didn't sing in, in Unhinged. I'm pissed off. I'm ticked off. No! 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 Ah. What's 24601? Is that part of your social security number? Everyone post your social security number in the chat, please. Thank you. Wait, is it actually against the TOS to ask? I'm doing it as a joke, obviously, but I don't want to get... Is it against the terms of service to ask for personal information, even as a joke? I hope not. Have I seen cats? I have seen cats. It wasn't quite as funny as I was hoping it would be, and I honestly did not have a great time watching it in, th in the theater. But I bet, I bet if I had like a really rowdy theater, I would have liked it more. My theater, when I saw it, was really boring and everyone just kind of seemed like they didn't want to be there. Some movies you don't really want people to, to be loud during in the theater. Some movies, I think, benefit from it. And I think Cats is one of them. I want people screaming out in terror and disgust any time a new character appears in Cats. Fuck! <laughs> yeah, I watched the whole thing. The best part of it is the ending. Um, there's like this really long monologue song that Judy Dench sings, and it's and she's like looking directly at the camera the entire time, and it's so bizarre and so strange, and it's honestly what I wanted the whole movie to be. It's not technically, is it not, I can't remember the term for it. It's not technically a monologue, right? If the character is talking to the audience, maybe I'm wrong. I'm not sure. I legit got drunk and watched Cats and it's still, it was, I bet it would be good while high though. I gotta try that. Add it to the list of movies to watch while high. Come on. Come on, Pop Man. Climb the umbrella. Climb it. Heat. I haven't seen heat. Wow. Why am I doing so bad? No! How long have I been streaming? I've been streaming. I've been playing this game for two and a half hours. And I still have not beaten it the second time. Interesting. You should watch the light, the lighthouse. I want to watch the lighthouse sober first, because I haven't even seen it, and I am a big Willem Dafoe fan. So, and you know, I like our pats as well. Shit. 
shit. Okay, I might... I feel like I'm getting to the point where I just... I've hit a wall, and I'm never really going to be able to make any progress unless I take a break. So maybe I might come back to this game tomorrow. Or something. Well, like, our bats! Nice. Nice. Hang on, you should switch places with me. Why, why are you the chatter and I'm the streamer? That's not fair. You've got the jokes. Ah. You're pushing boundaries. I have I have a microphone that's like, you know, like a the kind of microphone you hold. I don't know what you call it. There's a word for it. I have one of those. And I could plug into my computer, and I could stand here, and it would be like a stand-up comedy show. That's the ideal way to stream, I think. That'd be a fun way to start my streams, actually. With holding, There's something about holding a mic, mic. Like, yes, you're holding it so that you can speak into it, but it also weirdly makes a good prop, I feel like. It gives you something to do with your hands, and it also just... Something about the way it looks, a person holding a mic that like adds adds to it, I think. I don't know, which one? Just remembered one of my favorite YouTubers is a piece of shit. That's always a sad thing to remember. It's not me, is it? <laughs> Are we gonna turn into a drama stream now? Oh, Gus Johnson. Yeah. That was uh, kind of sad. Come on, pop man. Ah. Oh. How long before he- I don't know. I don't know if he would. Um, one of my favorite YouTubers is Steve-O. I do not follow him. Um, I mean, if anything's possible. I don't really want to, like, speculate on that, though. Yeah, I don't know anything about him, actually. Paul Schrader? What does Paul Schrader do? Is he the guy who was in, um, who was in Parks and Rec, or am I thinking of someone else? A different Paul. <laughs> the guy who was in Parks and Rec, like, who was one of the main characters for, like, um, just a couple seasons and then left the show. And then they, like, never talk about him again? And it's as if he was never there? It's kind of creepy, actually. He wrote Taxi Driver. He's become famous for his viral Facebook posts. Interesting. Steve-O is from Jackass? Okay. I want to get into the Jackass movies. I've never really watched them. And I know people are talking about them a lot now. I feel like public opinion has kind of changed there. I feel like people used to not really like respect those movies. And now it's like the opposite. I have no opinion on them because I haven't seen them though. Who's, who's the guy from Parks and Rec, though? Oh, Paul Schneider. <laughs> Paul Schneider. Paul, Paul Schneider, Paul Schrader. Same difference. I was going to say, if Paul Schneider wrote, <laughs> wrote um, Taxi Driver, that's quite a resume. <laughs> Parks and Rec? Taxi Driver? God damn. Oh, that was a big jump. You know what Popman reminds me of is like, he reminds me of a toy in Toy Story that um, Sid would have like hacked together. You know what I mean?
Fuck. Not to be confused with Dan Schneider. Oh, God. We don't talk about Dan Schneider. Was he the guy who was kind of Leslie Nope's love interest for a little bit? Yeah, he was. He was Leslie Nope's love interest for, like, I don't know, a hot minute, and then that's it. Then he left the show, and they just never bring him up again. They don't even talk about him at all. Not even a passing mention. It's so sad. I feel so bad for him. But then I remember he's a fictional character who doesn't really exist. But then I feel bad for the actor. Because, like, what does that say about you if, if the fictional characters aren't talking about the character you played? Parks and Rec takes a bit before it hits its stride. I'm scared to go back to it. Just, like, I feel like I wouldn't like it really that much if I rewatched it these days. There is, though, one joke from Parks and Rec that I'm pretty sure I will always find funny. It's when, um... I'm not going to do it justice because it's really the kind of thing you have to see. So maybe, I don't know, we've all seen Parks and Rec in this chat, I'm pretty sure. But um, there's a part where um, Chris Pratt's character is like auditioning for both like Survivor and another show. Like I think like, oh God, what is it? I don't know, like something like uh, maybe Who Wants to Be a Millionaire or something like that. Uh, I might be totally off there. But he's like, here's my audition for, um, er, oh god. The the it's the cutaway gag is like in one of the talking heads bits, they're saying that he auditioned for both Survivor and Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, and then it cut it does a cutaway gag where it shows the footage from that audition, and it's just him in his backyard going, my name is Andy or what whatever his name is. And here's my and here's my audition and then he like does like some sort of crazy stunt um and like I don't know I'm so not doing this justice and then he like says like and that was my audition for who wants to be a, a millionaire and I'm sure I totally like screwed up that joke but it, I could not stop laughing when I saw that in the show and it still makes me it still makes me laugh when I think about it to this day Parks and Rec is still good. It's not the show's fault that Trump got elected. I mean, the attitude behind the show kind of is, though. Um, it's very much that kind of, like... Um, I can't think of the word. That just, like, kind of comf comfortable liberalism, I guess. Like, just sort of, like, that, like, Obama era, like, everything is fine. We don't really need to worry about everything. Um while no one notices the, like, actual, like, fascist ideology taking over the country. Johnny Karate is the best character, yes. I think the, that, the Chris Pratt character in that show is, like, probably Chris, pa Chris Pratt's best role. It's the role that I think he is the most comfortable in. I don't really like Chris Pratt, um, but I think that's the role that it feels like he was born to play is that character. And maybe that's just because that was like the first major character he had, he played the first major role he had, but like every, anytime he, he tries to be like a Harrison Ford type in like, I don't know, Jurassic world or whatever. It just doesn't work. It just, I don't see it at all. I'm not going to blame people for getting comfortable. Life is short. Yeah. Greg Daniels is a lot less at fault than say W obviously. Yeah, no, I I'm not, <laughs> I'm not saying parks and rec is the reason for anything bad happening. I just mean like the attitude of that show is emblematic of the attitude that, um, that got Trump elected, I think. And it's not really the people. It's not really, like, the citizens or whatever. Like, uh, normal people who, who, who are totally at fault. It's mostly the people in power who had that attitude, whose fault it is. Mm. Hamilton caused Trump. Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Hamilton... What what a what a show. 
I love Hamilton. Um, I don't really want to get into it. It's just like the politics of Parks and Rec are very sort of um cuz it's a it's a show about politics, but it still tries very hard to be mostly apolitical. Um and it's also it's a pretty it, it's just I don't know how to explain it exactly. I, I think there are people out there who to, who could explain this much better than I could. I don't know. There are probably there's probably like a, a few video essays out there called like the politics of Parks and Rec or something like that that would have a much a much better analysis of this than I ever could give. But I don't know how to explain it other than that's just the attitude. It's very emblematic of the attitude at the time, and that attitude is that sort of like refusal to see anything wrong um led to the outcome of 2016 all of current day american history and culture revolves around or was birthed from the following jfk's assassination oj 9-11 and nom yeah i mean that's a big portion of it for sure but i think you're forgetting about the release of the amazing spider-man 2 gotta bring it back fuck no i deserve that pretty soon covid's gonna get added to that list i mean it it already has been but you know it's still very all very fresh <laughs> Ah, what the hell was that? That was bullshit. I wonder why where Potman looks. He mostly follows his hammer, but not always. Sometimes he's looking in a different direction from his hammer. And I, I wonder how he's programmed to look. Like what directions his face is facing towards. These are all questions for Mr. Foddy. That I need to, I need answers. I'm gonna end the stream soon, I'm pretty sure. It's midnight. It's a Tuesday night. I don't have to wake up early in the morning, but I wanna keep watching my Star Wars. I want, I think I wanna watch a Star Wars tonight, and I don't wanna stay up too, too late. Should I stream my reaction to Star Wars? Obviously, I can't show the movie, <laughs> but I can show my reaction to it. So you can just, it'll just be me, my face, going, whoa, Star Wars. All I've known is I've watched Parks and Rec once, and I've watched The Office tons of times. I'm not sure if I have a preference between the two, the two shows. And I do think Parks and Rec is a good show, like, don't get me wrong. Um, and The Office is a good show, too. They're both very good sitcoms. Obviously both very different, although not initially. Initially, Parks and Rec is uh, clearly trying to emulate The Office in a lot of ways. I do think I've seen rewatched The Office. I think I also have rewatched The Office more times than I've rewatched Parks and Rec. The Office, though, absolutely kind of gets a little bit too cartoonish for me, like later in the show. I think it's at its best when most of the characters, besides maybe, obviously, besides Michael Scott and maybe Dwight, are like just normal people. I think that's when it's at its best, is when the vast majority of, of the side characters just act like normal human beings because it does kind of start to get to a point where all the characters start to act like like weirdos, which makes for some good comedy sometimes. It still has some good jokes. It's still entertaining, but it's not quite the same. OJ gave us Kardashians, 24-7 tabloid journalism, the end of post-Cold War 90s innocence, along with Rodney King LA riots. Yeah. Now, what did Amazing Spider-Man 2 give us? Oh my god. 
No! <laughs> it's good, I like it. I just need to bring it back to Amazing Spider-Man 2 because that's the theme of tonight for some reason. I don't know when I decided that it was, but I mean, I can't stop now. Dane DeHaan fucking sucks in that movie, I agree, but also I think it's very funny. I think it is endearing how much he sucks in that movie. <laughs> That's another reason I like it, actually. I look forward to seeing Dane DeHaan's just weird performance in that movie. How he's clearly going for something and it's just not landing at all. When he's just a normal dude, like before he turns into Green Goblin, it's not the worst thing in the world. His Green Goblin's performance is really something to behold, though. It's not just bad, it's completely unsuccessful. Yeah, I agree. He achieved nothing he set out to achieve. I would argue he achieves a little bit of what he set out to achieve before he's Green Goblin. But after he's Green Goblin, whatever the hell he's trying to do, it is not working. It is just... He puts it out, he puts the acting out there and it lands with a thud. It's like, acting, thud. That's that's his performance. <laughs> Amazing Spider-Man 2 mirrors society and the fact of Electro's fascination with Spider-Man and how most people in society do that with creators and are other things covering up the truth. Exactly, and it's just like Batman Forever as well. And Incrediboy. Or Sin... What's his name? Sin... Fucking... You know, in, the Incredibles bad guy. Same story. Um, although there is the interesting kind of wrinkle of... Um, Electro, or what's his name? The, the character who Electro is before he becomes Electro is uh, is a black man who designed the fucking, what's it called? The uh, power grid or whatever. Like, he designed it. That's a plot point in the movie, and he gets no credit for it. And that is a thing that has historically happened all the time, is marginalized people not getting the credit for things that they have done and that's interesting the movie obviously does nothing with that at all but it's there a little bit like it's it's there it's re really frustrating that it's such a missed opportunity that they don't do anything with that but it's something that's in the movie at least um the problem with batman forever is that it's completely irritating and ugly you take that back you're right but i love it <laughs> and it's part of that is nostalgia i used to rewatch batman forever on on vhs so many times as a kid for some reason i don't know why i was like obsessed with this movie i think it was the first pg-13 movie i ever saw and i think that was why i felt like i was being a cool dude watching a movie for adults fuck Oh yeah, no, I could tell I could tell you were BSing. Would you prefer watching Batman and Robin to Batman Forever? I haven't I need to rewatch Batman and Robin. It's been too long. I feel like I might enjoy it more than Batman Forever just because it's so so crazy the entire time. It's wild. It's a roller coaster of a ride. However, I don't know. I'm not sure. I need to watch them both. I like Jim Carrey's performance in um in Batman Forever. Tommy Lee Jones is just phoning it in though. Um it's really funny to watch though. They kind of both are phoning it in in a way. I think that just uh jim carrey when jim carrey phones it in and he's doing his classic jim carrey like funny thing um 
it's more entertaining than when other actors phone it in. Uh, I haven't seen any, I haven't seen an epic movie or disaster movie or any of those kinds of movies. It is interesting though how they kept on making them after. Like, because we have Airplane, which is like kind of the first kind of popular movie of that type, right? And then they just kept making movies like it forever and never stopped. And we still get them every now and then. And it's really weird because I feel like there's not really that much of an audience for those movies. I feel like parody has kind of evolved uh, beyond that style. He's almost good in forever. He's given like a thousand more interesting performances. Yeah. I haven't seen a whole lot of Val, Kil Val Kilmer movies, so I don't know. To me, Batman Forever is his best performance because <laughs> it's the only one of his performances that I can think of right now off the top of my head. Remember the movie's va movie Vampire Suck? Vampires Suck? I do remember that. I think I watched it, actually. I remember there was a joke where they're all, all the vampires are moving on um, segways. I remember that was funny. I remember thinking it was funny. Parody is just a 30-second video on TikTok now. Yeah. I guess that's one way we get parody these days. But we get, like, um, a lot of parodies kind of, like, wrapped up. Like, in, like, I don't know, something like Rick and Morty has a lot of parody in it. Um, or, uh, I don't know. I feel like movies like Scream really kind of changed parody. Kilmer's Jim... Morrison performance in The Doors is his masterpiece, and maybe the most interesting musical biopic before they all became commercials for the band. Cool. I might look into that. I like The Doors. No! I'm gonna break my keyboard in a, in a, in a gamer rage. Watch out, my inner gamer's coming out. I'm gonna break something. I'm going to throw my mouse at the wall. It's totally inaccurate. That's good. <laughs> you got to take some creative liberties. Most biopics are, are better when they do, but also then you run the risk of people seeing the movie and going like, wow, I had no idea all that actually happened. And they just, people, some people watch biopics as like, as if they are documentaries, which uh, obviously is not uh, the best way to engage with that genre. One movie I recommend you watch as a film major is Saw 1. I honestly think that movie is very good. I feel like I've seen it. I don't remember it that well, though. I like James Wan, though. I really like the Insidious movies. They're like kind of my guilty pleasure horror movies. Like, I feel like the first one is generally liked. I think all the sequels are not. I like every single one of them, though. I think they're all very fun. And I enjoy seeing kind of the world building in those movies. Damn it. Yeah, I should probably call it quits soon. I just keep making mistakes. I have been stuck in this area the entire stream. I can't believe I call myself a pro gamer. Damn it. Damn it. Huh. My favorite James Wan movie is the part in Aquaman where they just have a romantic montage in Italy set to a royal... I haven't seen Aquaman. That's a movie I need to see. Now that's cinema. The Conjuring is pretty good. That's yeah, that is James Wan. I I like The Conjuring just fine. I actually love The Conjuring 2. The second one is um that's like my my comfort horror movie for some reason. I don't know why. 
Don't ask me why. It just something about it is very comfortable comfort comfortable for me. It's like just a nice movie to watch if I'm like I want to put on a horror movie, but I don't really feel like being challenged as a viewer. <laughs> I'll just put on Conjuring 2 and have a good time. I don't like I don't love how those movies are are very uncritical of the Warrens because the the Warrens as far as I know, I don't think they were good people. I think they were kind of con artists from what I've read. Um, and the movies just kind of act, just kind of take them at their word, uh, and present their, their cases very uncritically. Um, which never really bothered me too much until the third one, uh, during which for some reason, I don't remember why I don't really feel like rewatching or revisiting that movie in any way, but for some reason it was the third one that really made me feel like it was bordering on like offensive the way it was handling this like real life story of tragedy and exploitation and and murder um but yeah the conjuring part two very good movie i recommend it uh don't watch it thinking oh yeah shit all this really happened because it didn't it's not a real thing that actually happened just pretend they're all characters and they're all made up characters because they basically are they just share the names of real people from real life oh yeah they're all the conjuring movies are based on very loosely based on on real events um and those events are really just uh people making up shit or people pe people uh with mental illness uh being treated r wrongly and being uh validated by like uh by the warrens saying like oh yeah it's all ghosts and now you need to pay us money to uh get rid of them um shit like that um it's kind of upsetting but like just as simple ghost movies they're pretty fun except for the third one which i just did not like at all the Conjuring films are about a pair of utter con artists valorized and romanticized to a ridiculous degree. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you put it you put it better than I did, I think. Um, the Warrens are not people to, who should be idolized, I don't think. However, the version of the Warrens in the Conjuring movies, sure, it's fun. <laughs> they're fun movies. They're fun, stupid horror movies. Just don't pretend that they're, like, accurate in any way to the events that they're supposed to be based on the warrens were uh, the couple with the room and all that haunted shit is real the with the room with all that haunted shit is real yeah if you're if that's a question yeah it is uh i mean it's real in that yes the warrens are a real couple who charge money for <laughs> getting rid of demons and things like that um and they keep all their demonic objects and stuff that they have collected over the years in one room that they keep locked that is real um and no i would not go into that room even though i do believe that they're con artists who take advantage of people <laughs> i still wouldn't fuck with that i wouldn't fuck with that room <laughs> i'm like very i'm ghost agnostic like i don't i don't um I don't necessarily like cling to the idea that ghosts are real. Like that's not, I wouldn't, that's not a hill I, I would die on, but I don't not think that there are ghosts. Like I don't, I'm not, I don't feel confident saying like ghosts that definitely aren't real. Um, because I've heard so many stories and things that like, I don't know, shit, maybe. <laughs> I think more of me, a bigger part of me does not believe in ghosts than the part that does, if that makes sense. I'm probably like 60-40 ghosts aren't real. <laughs> but I'm not taking that chance. I'm not going into the room with all the demonic items. The Warrens were liars and con artists whose grift was so successful it continues to the present after both are dead and in the ground. Are they dead? I didn't know that. But they're still making movies about them, so yeah, you're right. Very successful. <laughs> Even if there's a chance it's haunted, I'm not messing with it. Yeah. <laughs> mm. 
Like, you tell me a house is haunted, I'm not going to lock myself in there for a day on a dare or whatever. Like, no, no, thank you. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> Like, I'm, I'm the type of person, like, I don't necessarily believe in ghosts, but I do not want to be proven wrong. That is not something I would ever, I never want to see a ghost in real life. I feel like some people who believe in ghosts really want to see a ghost. I don't. I never, I never want a ghost to present, present itself to me. <laughs> it would ruin my life. <laughs> I'm quite happy living in blissful ignorance if they are real. I prefer my Hollywood lies in the form of Oliver Stone conspiracy theories. Thank you very much. There you go. <laughs> like apparently Post Malone touched a haunted object and then legit almost got in a plane crash. Oh my god. I wonder if he would have gotten in that plane crash if he hadn't touched it. The logical part of me... Um wants to say yeah it would have happened either way i'm glad he's okay though no god i am getting so bad at this i'm just getting progressively worse i keep saying it's that i'm gonna end the stream soon and then i keep just wanting to do more climbing even though it's accomplishing nothing Inspired. Oh, tired. Post Malone. <laughs> Inspired. Action Bronson. What's Action Bronson? I believe in demons, so yeah, why not ghosts as well? I don't know if I believe in demons. I feel like that's a bit too specific for me. Like, ghosts could kind of be anything... Like, generally, it's like, yeah, people who have come back from the dead. Um, but I feel like ghosts, is, it's a very loose, like, it can, uh, it covers a very broad range of things. Demons, I feel like, is a bit more specific. I'm not sure if I'm quite as on board with that one. <laughs> Careful what you say, Ronan. You know, a lot of demons watch my stream. This stream is a safe space for any and all demons who wish to chat with me, like in the Twitch chat, not in real life chat. I actually would not like to be visited by any demons, but in Twitch chat, it's fine. Go ahead. Put it, put your, put your um, emoticons in there. Fuck. keep bouncing the way away i don't want to go satan enters the chat why do you say no pop man said no like that he was like no but we were doing fine he didn't even fall when he said that sometimes i just don't understand him Satan probably likes Megamind. Probably. I mean, who wouldn't, though? It's a very likable movie. <laughs> Shit. Okay, next time I do a big fall, I'm going to end the stream. That didn't count. That's not a big fall. Oh. Almost. That was almost a big fall, but it wasn't. I don't have anything to say about Pete Davidson. <laughs> Isn't this the second time you've asked me that on stream? I have no opinion of, on Pete Davidson. Zero opinion. Shit. He seems he seems funny. Seems like a nice guy, I guess. I don't know. Pete versus Kanye. Yeah, I know. I know that's going on. 
I feel very uncomfortable with that whole thing just because Kanye is, he's like very online about it, I guess. I don't really know much about the situation if I'm being honest, but he's very online about this whole thing. And I feel like, um, he's clearly going through like a bit of a breakdown or something. And I feel weird about like kind of witnessing it, you know, it feels like something that we shouldn't really be a part of. We can all agree Pete Davidson just has a massive peen. I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> Still terrible at performing, but that's part of his charm, I think. I guess I do have Pete Davidson opinions, I guess. They're coming out all of a sudden. I don't know. Uh, the last time I saw him on SNL, I agree he's not very good at performing on live TV, but I thought he was funny. I think I felt it felt like part of the charm for me. Other than that, though, no opinions on Pete Davidson. Okay, let's take this slow for once. He is funny. I just wish they stopped paying him so much money to suck at his fucking job. Jesus. <laughs> Cut him some slack. It's difficult for him swinging around that massive thing between his legs. I guess. <laughs> there's been more, uh, there's been more dick jokes this stream than usual, I feel like. I like his stand-up. I haven't seen his stand-up. Oh, I'm getting hungry. Why am I getting hungry? I didn't have a huge dinner. I had dinner at, like, um, at a point where I wasn't, like, super hungry, so I didn't eat a whole lot for dinner. And now I feel like that's starting to catch up with me, and now I'm getting hungry. No! <laughs> I can see you're very passionate about this, Ronan. <laughs> Whoa, thank you for the follow, monkey233145. Is it okay if I just call you 45 for short? No, wait. Hmm. 23. I will call you monkey. Whoa. We had Kanye in the chat this whole time? That's incredible. I mean, I knew this, of course. I was part of this plan. Shit. No! Oh, this game. This wonderful, wonderful game. What a joy. How did that not pogo me? Let's go. I wonder what this means. I don't know what language that is. I wonder what it says, what it translates to. I wonder if it's a secret message that'll help me beat the game. I like them both. Pete honestly seems like he barely knows he's on this planet half the time though. <laughs> I think that's just kind of how he, how he carries himself. That's like, the, that's his, uh, just the vibe. You know what I mean? Some people just have a, a, a certain vibe. <laughs> Um, what's the language in Star Wars? I know you know what it's called. You, surprisingly, I don't know what it's called. Uh, is it like Dungeons and, Dungeons and Dragons where it's like called, um, wait, no, I, I can't even remember what it's called in Dungeons and Dragons. Um, like the basic language, like that's like English, but it's not English, but it's the one that everyone speaks and it's English basically. Galactic basic. There you go. Yeah. Basic, right? I said basic. Oh, it's called Galactic Basic. Okay. So I was I was right. It is like Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> Back to your Pete takes. Too many Pete takes for one stream. Save it save them for another stream. Ooh, that was an interesting maneuver. 
Well, there is another language, though, in Star Wars, isn't there? There's a lot of different... There's Hatiz. That's one I know. The the language that they speak on Tatooine. I mean, not everyone speaks that language on Tatooine, but a lot of the aliens and weirder-looking creatures on Tatooine speak Hatiz, which is, you know, like Jabba the Hutt. Hatiz. Kind of a lazy name for a language, if you ask me, but whatever. Anakin... The little kid Anakin speaks Hutties in uh, in Phantom Menace. I only know this because I watched it with subtitles, and it says, Speaking Hutties. I love when aliens in Star Wars get pissed, and they just start going off and pretty much dropping the F-bomb. Yeah. I like the cusses in Star Wars. I don't. I can't think of any right now, but they're like weird like alien cuss words that aren't like real cuss words. It's fun. And we're back here, back to Orange Hell. This place is really starting to earn its name, Orange Hell. I never understood it before, but I'm starting to get it. Whew, okay. I am definitely gonna stop streaming soon. Glad he loves his vibe and doesn't give a shit. It's also totally the product of an immensely privileged celebrity who literally gets paid to bumble around and be viral. Yeah, sure. Let's go. Let's go. Pop man, let's do it. Let's go. No, 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 no. Let's go. Come on. Big circles. Big. I need a bigger mouse pad. Fuck. I'm. You're allowed to say more peat takes. I just feel like you should save them for the next stream, so that um, so that you don't run out. Wouldn't it be embarrassing if you ran out of Pete Davidson takes? on stream what's my midichlorian count it's um it's up there in the it's at, at least a dozen maybe a couple dozen midichlorians oh, shit i'm fine with midichlorians by the way i don't really take issue with it it doesn't take away the mysticism of the force for me because Midichlorians aren't the Force. They're just like a way of scientifically measuring, like, uh, you know, how Force sensitive you are with like no training or whatever. Um, like I could do without them, but it makes sense to me that in that in that more sophisticated time or whatever, even though it was a pretty shitty time, regardless. Uh, in that more sophisticated area, they had the means to know scientifically with evidence how Force-sensitive someone is. Like, that makes sense. It's fine. I don't really take issue with it. It is, it is definitely weird. The prequels are weird. They are weird movies. In a good way, in my opinion. I like I like the weirdness of those movies. <laughs> Shit. I love them too is my least favorite. A lot of people don't like Attack of the Clones. A lot of people like Attack of the Clones the least, I think. I really like Attack of the Clones. I'm one of those weirdos, I guess. Shit. With the awkward romance. I love the awkward romance. Anakin is such a creep. It's wonderful. And Padme is just like, I can fix him. It's great. It's a tale as old as time, honestly. And I think they have chemistry, honestly. That's probably my most out there prequels take, is that I do think Anakin and Padme have chemistry. I Do I want them to be, be together? Not really. Do I think they're good together? Not really. I don't know how to explain why I feel like they have chemistry. I just, they give off the vibe of two people who are attracted to each other, even if it's totally wrong and he's a huge creep 
I, I just think they're both good actors, I guess. And it helps that they're just, like, both attractive people. Come on. I'll never get over to this day of Padme dying of a broken heart. I agree, it's, it's very lazy. Um, I like, though, that Padme's death is Anakin's fault. That, like, ultimately he caused her death. And that she... the Her losing the will to live is, to me, that's a, that's a good line. Like, I like that she's lost the will to live. But then the fact that it's literal, that she actually just dies because she lost the will to live, I'm not sure if I like that or not. I don't think I... I don't dislike it. I do think it's lazy, but I don't I don't hate it. The idea of someone losing the will to live so much that they just die on the spot is really interesting to me. Natalie Portman's stomach is excellent in that film. <laughs> Stop being horny in chat. I, I mean, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, she's uh, yeah. <laughs> but let's not let's not let uh, Hayden Christensen's stomach go unnoticed. Those abs when he wakes up sweating <laughs> from a nightmare. In Attack of the Clones, they specifically make her costume in the third act, revealing her tummy. Yeah, yeah. I, I knew that was what you were referring to. Um, Hayden is fucking ripped in revenge. He is! Like, can you... can At that point, it's like, can you blame... Can you blame Padme? It's like, okay, yeah, I kind of get it, I guess. It's like, yeah, no, yeah, I could fix him. <laughs> Shit, come on. Um, I love episode three. That's my favorite. If not, that's one of my favorite, if not my favorite star Wars movies. Yeah. Episode three is great. It's the best prequel. I think, um, it accomplishes what the prequels are trying to accomplish the most out of all the prequels, if that makes sense. Um, but I do think attack of the clones is a close second only because the, Special effects are so much worse in Attack of the Clones, and it's really charming to me. <laughs> and it works for me. Like, it re the leap in, in CGI from Attack of the Clones to Revenge of the Sith is really impressive. In Revenge of the Sith, like, a lot of the effects are like... Like, even in Attack of the Clones, they are impressive for the time... In Revenge of the Sith, they're, like, still... A lot of them are still pretty impressive. Some of it looks like a video game, but some of it is like, whoa, that looks good. Um, and, yeah, his look in, in Revenge is, is very good. It's perfect. I also just like Hayden Christensen's acting. That's another thing. I can't really explain why I think he's a good actor. I just... It, his acting works for me in those movies. And, like, to the point where I legitimately don't get where people are coming from when they say he's a bad actor. Like, to an extent, I get it for some lines. Like, uh, you underestimate my power! Like, stuff like that. Like, okay. I get why that that's a bit... <laughs> that line delivery is not exactly um, the most convincing sounding. But most of his acting I genuinely think is good especially the looks he gives he's very good at looking either like a creep or like an evil just an evil bastard you know and when he's screaming at the end of revenge of the sith it's l legitimately heartbreaking for me <laughs> when he's on fire and he's like saying like oh, i hate you and all that like it works for me Oh, all right. I honestly should stop streaming because I'm just doing the same thing over and over again. And I'm also tired and I want to watch Star Wars. Uh, yeah. Okay. Let me just make it up here. Shit. Let's go. Anyways, good night, Ronan. Um, 
Thanks for stopping by. Come on. Come on. I want to make it to Orange Hell, and then I think I'll stop. So that way it gives me a chance to just get that part over with right away next stream. We should talk soon. Do, you have, do I have time over the weekend? Uh, I think so. Wait, uh, I'll get back to you. I'm in gamer mode right now. It's hard for me to think about my schedule. I don't, I, as far as I remember right now, I don't have anything going on in the weekend. My favorite dialogue in Revenge of the Sith is, from my point of view, the Jedi are evil. Then you are lost. Yeah, it's great. Okay. I'm going to end the stream for tonight. It's been very fun. It's been a fun time. Yeah, get back to me. I'll be in touch. Good night. Yeah. Good night, Ronan. You're welcome for the stream. <laughs> and thank you for stopping by. And thank you, Little Thicky, for, for stopping by. It's been fun talking about Star Wars and shit. Um, I don't know when my next stream will be. Probably tomorrow, but I've been wrong before. <laughs> um, I'll announce it on Twitter as usual, and yeah. Good night, everyone. Take care. Thanks for watching. <laughs>